Hello, everyone. Hi. Hey. How are you? We are live. You have you are here with the glass table to this evening. Um, Sharon is off tonight. Well, you are here with Mr. Tyler, Molly, Emma, Chessa, and PJ, and we have some special guests, so we're going to get right into it. Our first guest is Stacey Gavin. Hi, Stacey. I'm talking about this right here. Oh, yeah. of course. He will. Is that the boy or the girl? Yeah. Oh, that's both of them. This is my girl. That's both of them tonight. Yeah, this is my girl, honey, and that's my boy here. Yeah. So tonight, this is our third installment of act, our tribute to activism. If you have been following us, and we know you have, if you've been following us, you know that our first video, we paid homage to old school activists. And in our last video, we talked um, from, help me out, Emma, from 2000 to 2015. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so now we're going to bring it up to more uh, present time, and we're going to talk about and celebrate activism and activists, all types of activism, as you'll see, uh, those activism uh, that we talked about in our first and our second installment is mirrored. We actually do a lot of the same things that the activists did before us, go into newspapers, speak out in newspapers, uh, protests, and we also have our own little remix of protests because we do a little bit differently. If you followed us for our uh, memorial special, you will you would have uh, saw Chester, our founder, uh, not our founder, what am I talking about? The founder of Mo Memorial on Memorial, which is a different type of protest, and that's something that we saw previously in the other videos. And um, so let's get into it. Stacy, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah. Can you hear us? Oh, thank you for inviting me. Yes. yes, I can hear you. Thank you for being here. Can you hear me? Yeah. So, Okay. We, okay, so we, I just want to let everybody know we tried to work all the sound issues out before. If you cannot hear us, let us know in the comments so that we can work it out really early in the stream. Um, so, because we're also recording a YouTube video, so we want our YouTube people be able to see uh, and hear us really well. So, Stacy, why don't you start with giving us your ex Jehovah Witness story, if uh, briefly, if you don't mind. And then okay. talk, and I don't know what yeah, no, you and no. Emma probably discussed. Okay, go ahead. Go right okay. ahead. Um, yeah, so I left, um, I left in 2013. And, um, you know, it was very lonely after leaving, obviously. And so I thought, I'm going to check out, see if there's any XJW groups on Facebook. It just, you know, just this idea I thought of before. And, um, I found Emma's group, and so that was the first XJW interactions I've, I'd ever had, because I was in for, like, well, all my life, but only, like, um, from age 18 till I was about 28, was I real serious, dedicated, you know, pioneering everything, and so I lost, you know, obviously everything, is everybody, all of you all understand, um, but yeah, so I found Emma's group, and that was a huge source of, of comfort for me, and I also found a Rubens group and before it was archived, of course, um, and those were new experiences. Just I, I, my mind was blown because I had all this validation. Uh, and I knew how I felt. Hello? Just kidding, it's not uh, no, I'm very sorry. I should, I should be and, on mute right now. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Um, okay, so one day somebody shared a post from a Jehovah's Witness site on Facebook, a Facebook page. And um, they were like, oh, this is disgusting. Look at how, what they're doing now. And I, um, I went and clicked on it and I saw other people were saying um, apostate things on there. Like, you know, you're a cult and, or I don't know. I can't remember exactly what it was. I just knew it was very blasphemous for Jehovah's Witnesses. It was a huge no-no. And oh, I'd oh. never heard of that before. I've never seen it. And it was like, intriguing for me and and kind of like oh my gosh i gotta find it and see more of this and so i would say something you know like um you know how you treat people and you know all this stuff and then other extra homeless witnesses were also going on there and they were like liking my comment and adding to it and that was like that, that that's when this whole new world of activism 
opened up for me. And I thought, okay, I got to find a group of people who want to do this because anytime I posted in any regular XJW groups, you'd get a lot of comments from other XJW saying, just leave them alone. Stop letting them control you. Just move on with your life. And I'm like, this is therapeutic. It was real therapeutic to go to Jehovah's Witness pages and say, um, anti Jehovah's Witness things. So for me, it started out as a, a trolling thing for, for my own pleasure, <laughs> like, you know, to get uh, some satisfaction out of saying uh, apostate stuff. And then oh. it turned into uh, a really meaningful um, cause. And mm -hmm. so um, I started my own group and I went into the other XJW groups. I said, if you want to, like I said, I, I was thinking about it as being trolling rather than activism. Um, but then, and once I gathered up this big group of people, we would uh, bombard JW pages, bombard review mm -hmm. sections of, uh, on Google, on everywhere that had to do with Kingdom Halls, conventions, um, Jehovah Witness merchandise, and we would put the truth out there, you know, the actual truth. You'd put jwfacts.com, and um, it was such an exciting feeling to have an army, so to speak, of uh, activists together mm -hmm. supporting each other and um so we, my activism started behind the scenes you know long before i started my first cart crash um and and it was amazing like i uh, at some point i um you know created a, a jehovah's witness uh, persona and i started friending a bunch of them and and the Jehovah's Witnesses on Facebook, if they see you have a JW.org on your <laughs> on your profile picture, they're going to throw themselves at you. I mean, I would log in and have 50, 60, sometimes over 100 friend requests. And so it didn't take long to get over two, 3,000 Facebook friends that were all largely Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, so I would post something really cringe. I feel like I'm talking to myself because I just see myself right now. <laughs> Y'all still there? Oh. Yeah, we're here. Okay. Yes, it's your close-up, Stacy. <laughs> oh, okay. It's your okay. close-up, honey. <laughs> yeah, we're still here. We're in the background listening. Okay. All right, awesome. Um, and so, yeah, so I would post something really cringy, right? Something about, oh, I love Jehovah, blah, 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 praises and stuff. And they would share it on their own Facebooks. I'd get like 20, you know, it shows what people would share, 20 shares. <laughs> And so I would, I would alter after I'd get some shares, I would alter the caption to say, you know, Jehovah's Witnesses are our cult who protect child molesters and then put jwfacts.com. And then some of them, you can see who shared it. And so I'd go to see who shared it in the comments and they would be all fighting with each other. How would you, why would you post something like this? Oh, I didn't know I said this. And it was just, oh my God, the most satisfying thing ever. <laughs> they're, they're, and like, uh, they started sharing, um, uh, like warnings saying be careful who you friend but they would just add me again as another persona so it's like exposing that they, they're they very easy to fool sadly <laughs> um, and so it's, that's kind of where I started building up my um, I guess my thickness of my skin because I would get some really mean comments from Jehovah's Witnesses so once I found my very first cart I'd never seen a cart before ever a, a Jehovah's Witness but next to their literature car. I'd never seen it until um, one day I was on campus and they start setting up and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. So my, my heart was racing out of my chest, right? Because that's some, for some reason, us as XJWs get that um, physical reaction when we see them, you know, like whether we want to throw up or we want to have a heart attack or something. And so I was like, well, uh, screw it. I'll, I'm going to crash it. And so I, I recorded it too, but it only caught like parts of it. Um, so that was my very first cart crash, and then I became addicted, and I started crashing more carts, and then uh, I got invited to uh, my first protest, which was in Warwick, um, and that was amazing because I finally got to meet in person other activists, and it, it was just, yeah, and that's why I got this tattoo here to kind of remember it, you know, VAA uh, 11517, and it was fall, and it was up, up you know, in New York area. It's beautiful um so that was really the starting point you know it started with online and then just then before you know it i'm
crashing a, a convention with thousands of people in it holding up a banner and they're like with 50 men escorting me out that was in uh, Vancouver Canada that was pretty amazing too but yeah so I did that and then um London twice um and so yeah yeah New York London and Vancouver and then cart crashes throughout the United States so it's been it's been amazing I, I do feel like I'm getting kind of tired at this point um, cause there's only so much you can say, you know, I'm trying to get more creative, but I do hope one day to kind of, uh, I don't know, slow down, but I never want to stop, you know, um, at least raising awareness. Stacy, <laughs> see, that was a phenomenal opening. So, and thank you so much for giving us insight. Short or long. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was... <laughs> It was your truth. It was your uh, perspective. So we thank you so much for sharing that and sharing um, the protests. Because I'm actually a new uh, activist, like um, Molly and I are newer. And so when we were putting this project together, we had to have, I don't want to call y'all old school because a lot of you guys are not newer or newer too. Um, not newer. Well, Emma, you've been around a little bit. Right. But I was going to say, Stacey, I'm so glad you found my group and I forget that it was the f one of the first groups that you was in. So I, I feel kind of privileged that, yep. and you've come so far since then, like it's amazing. And I really admire some of the stuff. You've got lady balls, honestly, like when you go up to people on the college campus and stuff and I'm just like, wow, because even do car crashes, I'm like, Pfft, like my heart. Yeah, so yeah. I admire what you do. Mm -hmm. It's that physical reaction that we get. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Yeah. And I was looking um, through your group one day, like kind of at my old posts, now that they have that feature where you click on your name and it'll show you all the posts. You go all the way back to 2013 and it's like, oh gosh, it makes me cry because I see how far I have come. Like you said, how far yeah. I have come. It's, um, it's a, activism, I feel like uh, it really, uh, it helps you gain your power back. It helps you gain some... Mm um some semblance of well some of your self-respect back you know and and making it all worth it like i didn't i don't want to just i can't just move on if i wanted to move on with my life because they're everywhere you see them set up yeah. their cards you see their literature they come to your door you can't move on so why not just um you know refuse to play their shun game and and talk to them when you see them and tell them hey you know you do know that your un, your organization is under investigation and, and all this stuff you know just you know the whole spiel um just hit them with the like truth I'm helping others because i've had many people reach out and i've had so many people um email me call me i've had met people in different countries that have given me hugs crying and saying you know they thought they were alone until they came across you know one of my videos or something and it's just oh my gosh it's yeah it makes it all worth it it makes all of those years that I spent in the cult worth to, to be able to help mm. other people like that. So definitely That's amazing. That is amazing. Well, thank you so much. Um, we have uh, people in the comments here that are very opinionated. I guess I'll say that about <laughs> um, some things. Um, so oh, if you really? guys do, you have <laughs> do you have a do you have a, a channel, oh. uh, Stacy, that you want to plug? Stacy Lopez. Stacy Lopez. So you do have a YouTube yeah, channel. Have, um, a... Yes. Okay. So we'll we'll uh, drop the. Uh, oh, yeah, I did start. The link in the um, comments, so you guys can go and subscribe to her channel. I did get a chance to uh, briefly browse the channel like a couple weeks ago, and I just saw a lot of uh, protest uh, footage. Uh, so I thought that was pretty cool. And so you guys will be able to uh, see oh, yeah. uh, Stacy live and um, in action with some of her protests because she's a, 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 a sorry I can't talk today uploaded a lot of that on her YouTube channel. <laughs> so you guys, let me see. Let's get to the comments and see if we have some questions here. It says, uh, let's see, anything that's weird that's kind of on topic here. We have Stacy's channel. Is legend by JW Suicides. Thank you, JW Suicides, for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. That's so nice. No, uh, JW Suicides channel is legend. 
<laughs> yeah, she's a lovely lady. Yeah. 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 And uh, let's see here. Let's see. Uh, we have David Wilkin here. Uh, am I saying your right name right, David? I should know your name by now. He always comments and follows us and watches our uh, show. So thank you so much, yeah. David. She says Stacy has done tremendous work. That is someone saying we're gonna be destroyed at Armageddon, and I'm like, Aww. come at me, Jehovah. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't think so. you know. I want to say <laughs> yes. right now. I don't I did, value. Thank I did. It. See those that comment, but I want to say I don't think Tony is actually a JW because I think I've seen him in the groups. So he is this might be a slight troll on his behalf. Uh so uh here it is here. Bring it yeah. on, Tony. Bring it on. Uh, we're, we're ready for our regret again. Can, <laughs> if it's you guys at Armageddon. We've already what five times at least anyway, so we're prepared. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Martin. Martin is joining us from the UK. Right, yeah. Hi. And uh, let's see here. I'm sorry. I'm trying to get to you all. Thank you for guys for all joining us from YouTube and from um, from Facebook. Alma says our show looks professional. Well, thank oh, you. Oh, wow. <laughs> we are constantly trying to improve. So we will we'll take that confidence today. Thank you. Thank you, Holly, for joining us. You, you are a new face. Thank you so much. Thank you. For joining us. Lester says Hi, good afternoon. Hi, Lester. I think you had our Gilbert. Hi, Sam. Hi. Hi, everyone. Bye. All right. So I can't get to all the highs, so we're just gonna do a collective hey, everybody. Uh, hey, so everybody. I just want to let you know that we're not an, uh, annoying, uh, ignoring rather your comments. Um, we're gonna uh, if you have I see some of the questions here. Uh, if you have any questions for our guests right now, you can go ahead and join us on the stream or you can comment in the comments below. Um, so, oh, here's, they're sharing, you guys. Woo, woo. Hey, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Thanks for joining us. I'm All sorry. right. Okay, so now that we have finished the shout out section of the last table, <laughs> let's go on and we have also another special guest joining us today um we have kim and mikey so stacy you can hang out with us as long as you can i know you do have to run uh but hang out as long as you can and hey, so I'm if we, in case minutes. okay great so if you have questions for stacy she's going to be back backstage and we'll bring her on and she can address them personally okay so we're going to say bye for stacy for now Bye, Stacey. Oh, we have another special guest, uh, Kim and Mikey. Kim and Mikey, let's see if we got you on here. Hello. Hi, Hi everybody. <laughs> we made it, y'all, through the technical difficulties, through the yeah. sound. We are yeah. here. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Live in color. Hey. My face looks a little reddish because I got one hell of a sunburn last week at work. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> My lips are all chapped and split and everything else. So. You look good. And Kim, don't get me, but Mikey looks good. He looks fine. He looks good. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> sunburn and all. <laughs> look, you got one rooster with one, two, three, four, five, six hands. Man, I'm living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that. I'm going to come out of his mouth. Exactly. <laughs> right. This is a live show. Hey, we, we, we keep it real here. So you are at home. Yeah. You are at home. Cool. So you guys, we are so excited to have you here. We we got to share yeah. some of our our Kim and Mikey stories behind stage because everybody has had an, an encounter, an intersection, have seen Kim and Mikey videos. So we thank you so much for thinking about the little old glass table podcast mm -hmm. today <laughs> and coming and joining us. So why don't you, you know, a lot of people joining us today may not. Uh, know your your ex Jehovah Witness story. So can you give us a little bit about how you love? I do. I know your fellowship with story because I I've watched your. Of course, I watch your videos. Um, but I don't know if you want to give us like a brief background. Okay, Mikey. Oh, okay. I guess. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, see, that's why Kim and I work so good together because when I start telling an untruth or something that I've you know put. In the wrong uh, timeline of the sequence, she'll correct me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, for Kim and I, we've we've always had issues with elders. Um, you know, like every male, we always strive to become, you know, ministerial servant, regular pioneer, an elder, and circuit overseer. When I was reaching out to be a ministerial servant, I began to see a lot of politicking in the congregations. And it really began to make me think and question what this organization was truly all about. And I had an opportunity when I was out in service as a regular pioneer with a uh, circuit overseer. And I asked him, what do I need to do to reach out even further to become a circuit overseer? And his, his reply floored me. You would think the circuit overseer would say, learn everything you can about the Bible, learn all about Jehovah, how to, you know, comfort people and things like this. His answer was learn everything you can about the organization. And I was like, just dumbfounded because I didn't expect that at all. That really got my wheels and my mind spinning. And there was a lot of things that I observed. Um, we had a lot of the puzzle pieces, but we didn't have the picture to put it together until October of 2012. Yes. And, you know, one of the things that I struggled with being a Jehovah Witness and especially being a pioneer and a ministerial servant at the time was the whole concept of the Holy, Holy Spirit. I couldn't understand how the Holy Spirit could appoint these men. And then it takes an act of Congress to get them uh, de deleted when I could obviously see that they were not that they themselves were not following the direction of the Watchtower Society. So we did a lot of study, a lot of research. Granted, it was all within Watchtower literature. And we could see that even in the local congregations, the elders were not following even the directives that you know the governing body was placing in the Watchtower magazines. So for a long, long, long time, we had questions. And a lot of it had to do with behavioral problems of elders. <laughs> the abuse of elders? Yeah. Being the victims of a lot of abuse from elders. <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, we were just victims of witch hunt after witch hunt after witch hunt. And it's like, and it, it was just interesting to watch because every time Body of Elders came after us, and me in particular, I'd always have a Watchtower article to kind of like shut them down. So they didn't know what to do with me because every time we had a problem, here's Mikey with a Watchtower magazine. And if we speak against the Watchtower, then we're speaking against God. No, excuse me, I meant speaking against your, the organization. So these things weighed heavily on our minds for a long time. And um, it wasn't until a dear friend, well, it, in, and in the meantime, we had moved to a different state, saw the same behavioral pattern from local um, elders. Um, it was just, to say it was a nightmare would be putting it lightly because my, my desire is to help people to become more than what they are. And even as JWs, my whole thought process was climbing the corporate ladder and being in a better position to help people. And that was never achieved, obviously. So I ended up inviting a uh, JW friend to come out here and visit us once we moved from Wisconsin to our uh, local place here in New Mexico. And this, um, this JW accepted the invitation. Now I say JW because at the time I didn't know that he was an ex JW. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't didn't have a clue. So this dear friend came over. We'd known our, known each other for decades, and w I was explaining some of the issues with elders and some of our experiences and things like this. You even he even said Jehovah's Witnesses are the most deluded yeah. people on the planet. Yeah, as and a JW, he's saying this. Yeah, I even said that, and so he took that as an opening to utter the next words and his next words would floor anybody he says well you know i actually believe that jesus died on a cross and not on a stake and i said 
What? <laughs> but we knew this guy since 1986 and his whole family and spent a lot of time with the whole family. So, you know, we weren't going to kick him out of our house. No, I just wasn't going to do that. But I had, I had a lot of respect for this person. So I thought, well, let me hear what you have to say at least. Because there again, I was already having problems with elders and things like this. So I'll at least give him the benefit of the doubt. He said, go get your reasoning book and look at that quotation under the cross that is taken from the Imperial, the Imperial Bible Dictionary. So I got it. And then I read it. He says, now, you ever wondered what those dot, dot, dots were? It's the um, e ellipsis. And it's like, well, not really. So he suggested go online, go to openlibrary.org and um, get the entire quote from the Imperial Bible Dictionary. And that was the puzzle piece. That put it all together right there because I saw for the first time that Watchtower manufactured a lie. Right that right that minute, right in front of him and Mikey. <laughs> yeah. Mikey and I looked at one another and said, you know we're going to get disfellowship for this. Yeah. So, I mean, it was just that instant. Because, see, at, at that point, you know, with the problems we had within the congregation, we knew we weren't going to keep our mouths shut. <laughs> we just knew that. We're not that type of people. No. So, you know, like, like all of you and like all of the Waking Up JWs today, we, we took the time to study and research, and we found one manufactured lie after another. And I was going to say, um, we um, were disfellowshipped in – I just wanted to mention how we ended up with a copy of the Imperial Bible Dictionary. When we first started doing videos in September, October of 2013, someone contacted us and said, can I send you an Imperial Bible Dictionary? And she did. And we've been friends ever since. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Jane Doe. And I know she's watching. Funny. So hello. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and now it's like, oh, my goodness, I've got a hard copy of that in that imperial imperial bible dic dictionary so from there you know we we actually shut down our personal business for a year and devoted an entire year to study and research so even before kim and i decided to do our first youtube video we had already had a year's worth of research underneath our belt so that when and we, we never stopped yeah and we haven't stopped then and the one thing that that Kim and I saw at the time when we was watching um, ex Jehovah Witness videos is that we personally did see a lot of anger we saw a lot of um, I don't know just a lot of different type of personalities but the one thing that we did not see was anybody mocking Watchtower. <laughs> Nobody was mocking the bullshit. So, I, you know, Kim and I, that's how we pretty much started. You know what? That's what we're like anyways. So. Yeah, let's just mock the living crap out of this and see what happens. And you know, here we are today. <laughs> Seven years later. Hello. That's great. Okay. I'm, I'm in it now. In it now. <laughs> can you put it to where we can see all of you? There all right. Okay, I <laughs> yeah, I feel like I've been talking. Sorry, to guys. I'm, all, all I'm all, fine. No, you're fine. Um, I'm always doing a thousand things. Yeah. So um, I'm sorry. Um, so I'm I'm looking at the comments here. Everybody is really excited that you guys are here. I just love um, me a good story, so I have been just like listening and nodding along and just enjoying yeah. you telling me. I mean, you guys are great, really. And I just want to say how great this podcast is. You guys are so professional. I mean, my goodness, there's not that many, you know, glitches or anything. And the way oh, you have wow. it up is so professional. I mean, this is awesome. Thank you so oh, much. Okay. As you said that we're so <laughs> professional, I'm taking a drink here. Like, you know, <laughs> well, you know, the whole long and short of it is, is that once we, we had this year of research under our belts, I had to go to Arizona for a 
mountain man rendezvous because that's how we made some of our income. And I decided I was going to have um, dinner with my mother. <laughs> And I had, and I brought my New World translation, and I had a few little notes that I had tucked into the um, to the uh, leaf side of it. And I thought that I was going to be able to, because I was really, really prepared to do the six oh seven thing and just show that it was all, it was just the wrong dates and Watchtower was wrong. Bullshit. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> so, so as we're preparing to have dinner, now keep in mind, my, my mother, before she became a JW, JW, she used to read tarot cards. And she oh, never wow. had yeah, she never had any training, never, you know, she would just make stuff up and it appeared like it all came true. <laughs> so it's it oh, like, sounds like the governor body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> make stuff up on the fly. And over the years. Now that Kim and I reflect back on that, we can see that my mother's behavior pattern would indicate that if you believed in spirits, that she had a demon attached to her. Because like when we would get together as a family and just play regular playing cards, she hated playing regular playing cards. And Kim asked her one day why. And my mother says, well, I can still see patterns in the cards. Now, here's a fully indoctrinated JW woman not wanting to play regular, you know, playing cards because she can still see patterns in the cards. You know, something should have clicked back then, but it, it, it didn't. So anyhow, we sit down for dinner and my mother asked me if I would, if I would mind saying a prayer. Now, mind you, we hadn't said anything to anybody at this point. No, nobody knew nothing. So I said, well, of course I wouldn't mind. Why would you ask that? And out of the blue, she says, well, I don't know. I don't even know if you pray anymore. And it's like, where in the hell did that come from? Because she had not a clue. So I said, I'd love to say prayer, but you have to understand, I won't use the name Jehovah because I discovered it's a Catholic invented name. And she said, nope, you say your own prayer. And my head went down. And there again, I don't know if anybody believes in spirits, whether it was just my reaction to my mother, I don't know. But for the first time in my life, I could not physically utter a prayer to myself. I mean, I just, I, I could physically feel a blockage right there at my mother's table. And that indicated to me that there was a serious, serious problem, even in my own mother's life. I think there was an evil presence there because of dealing with her in the past and looking back in the past. Archon, whatever. And it was at that time that when I got back that I started doing even more in-depth research into the occult, if you will, and some of the things that are connected with that so I could have a better understanding of what, you know, whether you believe them in them or not, the JWs do. And the JWs live on that fear that they're inculcated with regarding the occult and things like that. So don't be afraid to study and research this stuff because all it does is it just gives you better ammunition to deal with them. Mm. It does help. It, it, it really does help. So um, after that, I'll let you finish the story because that's when all hell broke loose for us. <laughs> oh, so he said he was going to his mountain man thing. Okay, now when he goes to these, there is no internet, there is no phones, there's nothing. It's a bunch of guys out in the middle of nowhere camping and living like they did back in the mid 1800s. All hell broke loose. We got unfriended on Facebook. My daughter was getting emails and phone calls and messages through Facebook of like, well, since you're so close to your parents, we're going to assume you're, you've gone apostate too. And, you know, my daughter Shyla and I are like, what is going on? Because we didn't even know what had happened in Arizona because he didn't call me and tell me. <laughs> so apparently we did find out later that his mom immediately started calling everybody 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 even her elders and it's funny because he had had dinner 
with a JW friend of ours in Cottonwood the night before. And that poor guy got accused of being the apostate and talking to him. <laughs> and so we on a witch hunt after that poor guy. And, and he didn't know what was going on. Yeah, because I hadn't said anything to him because I didn't know how he was going to react to me, you know, knowing what I knew at that time. So it's like, no, this is just a dinner between long time friends. And that's all it was. But boy, my mother, boy, she, she took that and she just drove it right into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So all of us were immediately marked as apostates. Um, nobody even asked us. Nobody even asked me what I believed or anything. Just automatic. My daughter and everybody just, I mean, it, it was just unbelievable how fast. You think the COVID is spreading fast. Yeah. This spreads fast. <laughs> 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 so that's pretty much the long and the short of it you know after i get back here we kind of like well let's just do some youtube videos you now now that my mother is trying to um you know get us disfellowshipped and all that stuff i've got nothing to lose now wow. so we just went full board and they disfellowshipped us on september 18th which was a few days after our wedding anniversary and it's interesting because we got a certified letter from them and he was going deer hunting he says there's no way you know i can be in town and I didn't want to go by myself. So we contacted our elders and said, look, he's going to be out of town. And they sent us a letter and said, well, we can appreciate that everybody's busy, but this is the date of your hearing. <laughs> and it was, I think, on the 18th, a f like a week later. So they only moved it a week later. He was going to be gone till after October 1st. So we actually had a lawyer send watchtower and our body of elders a um cease and desist for harassment because here in the state of new mexico anything they do like that is against the law wow and so you know we got the letter back and jw struggle a uh, youtube channel he covered all of that you know the name of the videos how to just fellowship two people with zero proof because it was <laughs> all done on hearsay the yeah. elders showed up here when I was home alone and he was at work and they started questioning me. Wow. So you oh, came and, up for that. Yeah. Um, and I have to back up a little bit in May, um, they showed up unannounced and questioned us and they asked, you know, well, why would you show your brother? Cause he had showed his brother some subliminal images when he was in Arizona, his brother is not a witness, but his brother told the mom, <laughs> so we got back to the elders and they're like, well, why would you use the literature in a negative way? And he says, look, I'm not the one that put the, you know, in the literature. Right. I <laughs> you know, he's right. on the songbook. Yeah, so I didn't do that either. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we went through this whole thing. And so since we didn't show up for a judicial hearing, it was all done on hearsay. And so we were disfellowshipped and we were tickled pink. We just started doing videos. Well, what, what was interesting, just, just at the very end there, um, the elders that called the house wanting me to get into a three-way conversation with them. And so I picked up the phone and they just started, you know, talking their, you know, their normal nonsense that they were going to talk. And I says, well, just hold on right there, guys. I says, since you came into my house and you had a spiritual conversation with my wife and questioned me and questioned her without my knowledge and without my being there, you brothers usurped my headship. This conversation. Is over, and I hung the phone up on him. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how that goes when you're married. I mean, we, my husband, we didn't have it to the degree that you guys. We had a very similar situation, and they will overstep. You know, yeah. this is this is the rule that they put in place because now, you know, I mean, talking to me is you can talk to me if you want to, but since they are insistent. That things are supposed to go a certain way then you have to hold them accountable to their own rules mm -hmm. as to how you know a woman is supposed to be spoken to in the home whether in the presence of her husband or not yeah and i didn't give them anything i just said look this is hearsay why don't you go after his mother yeah. for slander because i said <laughs> yeah. we're being shunned and we've done yeah. nothing 
We've done nothing so wrong. That's all I kept saying. And they finally got tired of that after about half an hour. But you mentioned the rules, and I just wanted to mention real quick that the unreluctant um, XJW just did a tweet this morning about the elders manual here, here a quote from it in the introduction, uh, point four, about halfway down that point, it says, rather than making rigid rules for the congregation, rely on scriptural principles and direction from Jehovah's organization. So how can they just fellowship and go after us on a witch hunt on hearsay and then disfellowship us without even hearing what we have to say. Well, not only that, how, yeah. how can they do that when they say, well, we don't make rigid rules. <laughs> See, that the whole problem with this elders book is that the elders are told one thing and then they apply it differently to the rank and file. Right. And that's why they had a little bit of a problem with me, even though I did not have an elder's book because my dad was an elder i was aware that that book existed now what my dad had told me about the book was that well there's nothing in this book that's not in the magazines <laughs> they just made it more convenient to find it so knowing what my dad had told me being that elder i knew that if i had any problems with elders i better be looking at these books because that's where the answer is going to be and that's that's been kim and i's you know life or that's what saved us multiple times you know when i had these issues with elders so i knew the book existed but because my dad and i and i don't want to you know assign anything um negative to my dad because my dad um he wasn't an elder but maybe six seven eight months before he finally passed uh due to lung cancer so he wasn't an elder all that long. and and in fact he was actually an elder in training even up until the point where he he passed so he didn't have years and decades of listening to the bullshit and trying to cover up the bullshit either right and since hmm. he was a lot like or like mike's a lot like his dad i always tell him i think your dad would have woken up yeah, I, I honestly, if he would have had to been on one of these child abuse cases, I think his dad would have said, whoa, guys. And I think his dad would have called the authorities. I yeah. really do. Well, I'll, I'll give you guys um, an example here. Through the grapevine, I have heard that there was an incident in one of our previous congregations that a male, JW, committed adultery. And the adultery was confessed to the presiding overseer. And the presiding overseer said that he would take care of it. And years later, the issue came up. And I shouldn't say years later, but within a few months, the issue came up in front of my dad. And my dad said, wait, what? How come the rest of the body wasn't um, told of this? So my dad held that body of elders to their feet regarding hiding um, from the rest of the body an incident of um, marital infidelity. So that's why I strongly suspect that if my dad was fully aware of the child abuse that watched how it was hiding, I think my dad would have woken up and probably been in the same position that I am now. I noticed Karen here in the comments, um, she said that she is a medium and had a near-death experience while she was a witness and she thought it was demon possession. And that's wow. the thing, is JWs think this is evil, that it's all bad. But when you leave, you find out, you know, just like people, there's good and there's bad. Just like these spirits, there's good and there's bad. And ever since leaving, you know, I've looked and investigating, investigated a lot of this. And but I do know just being around his mom, I do feel an evil presence. <laughs> so, so do I. Yeah. But I do know there is good and you know it's all about energy and frequency and tapping into the universe. And I know I don't go a lot into that into our videos, but I am a firm believer in what you're putting out into the universe. That is what you're going to get back. Well, you know, you'll, you'll probably have a few people disagree with this and you'll have a, probably a lot of people agree with it. But if you're ever having a really bad day, 
just when you know the world seems to come crashing down around you one of the best things you can do is take off your shoes and go for a walk in the grass on the ground and because we are allegedly made from this earth we have a connection to it and whether you like the phrase or not don't really care mother earth will take care of us and one of the things that you need to do when you're feeling you know dis uh, i don't know the word i'm look um disjointed disjointed stressed is, out. is to connect yourself to the earth and release all of that negative energy because there is positive and negative energy if you don't believe me get two magnets and you'll see that you have opposite poles pushing and or attracting so you there is that energy there and we have a certain amount of energy with built within us so when you're feeling stressed and you need to let it all out take your shoes off and walk barefooted maybe do some gardening get your hands in that dirt and you'll find that that negative energy does release well in fact we were just watching a video this morning while we were eating breakfast and there is a neuro specialist and you know they've always showed like the sensors where they put like this cap on people's brains with all these wires and stuff and they can like map your brain and your electrical signals and stuff now they have a new um apparatus i forget what it's called it's magnetic something they don't even have to put these near your head they can put it out here and he says this proves that our thoughts, our energy, these electrical pulses do not stay in our head. They are released out. So what does that tell us? We're just antennas. That's crazy. So enough about us. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't expect us to do as much talking as we're doing yeah, here. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you are fine. We are so happy to have you and Stacey yeah. here. Yeah, actually, that I, is why you're here. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Actually, I, le I left it in the comment section, but I will say it now too, that last year I went uh, kart crashing and I, I ran into two, two women at the kart. And I was like, well, I'm going to test a little something and just mention the, shepherd, uh, the shepherd's book. I actually brought it up on my phone and showed them. And they were like, that that can't be because it does say that it comes from battle but then the the stamp says that it's from south korea so that that can't be jw material but you can come uh come to our meeting tomorrow and talk to our elder about it because we see that it seemed to it seems to be distressing you now what they didn't know that each and every question of mine was like a spearhead and I did not say I'm an apostate. I, I said, I met some witnesses the other day. I got intrigued, so I Googled. I found this. Uh, what the hell, guys? Uh, so I, I was like, I'm not going to say I'm an apostate. I'm not going to say I'm an XJW because they are going to be like, stay away, Satan. They are going to like shut down, leave, uh, all that like they they were already dicey with me when i started mentioning csa and stuff so i was like i'm not trying my luck with that and uh, the next day i met with the elder and he was like all kinds of flustered about me having read that book and it was like um well uh, all of this is in the watchtower uh, literature that we <laughs> distribute and and uh, this is not distributed to the whole congregation because it's sensitive matters and only like spiritually strong people can uh, um, handle it and all that. And I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they say. That's what they say. And it, it's crazy to, it's crazy to me because I read that book and I, I, I read your material. I was a, I was a JW. I grew up a JW. I know what's in your material, and and you changed your material. I left uh, like nine years ago this year, and I, I'm looking at the new material like, huh, like. 
y'all are not the same stuff anymore. Yeah. I know it. In fact, I had an email from a Pimo this morning, and um, I'm not going to mention who he is, but he is in the SL, ASL um, group, and they are getting the um, Zoom, you know, because they're getting the ASL meeting Zoomed in to them, just like the JWs are getting the stream. And he was on Zoom. Now, we know Zoom is getting hacked, and they're, you know, putting all kinds of stuff in, and there's hackers all over the place. I've heard it's one of the easiest pl places to hack. But this Pimo, he contacted an elder concerned because when they sign into the Zoom to get the meetings, they have to use their full name. And he only used his first name. And an elder got onto him and said, you have to use your full name. And he doesn't want to because he's concerned that if Zoom is hacked by these people putting in like porn and, you know, videos and all of this, that they will find out who he is. And I told him, I said, this is an incredible violation of the GDPR with people's personal data, especially there in Europe, you know, where they're really strict with this. Hmm. So, I mean, if I was a JW having to sign into Zoom, I wouldn't use my real name. No. No. Because <clears throat> they made them sign forms, was it not last year, the year before, where they had to agree that they could use the data and stuff like that. So, yep. I don't know. It just always seems suspicious that they're always after data of who they are and, yeah. And in reality, you've got to step back a little bit and ask, who are they really collecting it for? Mm. That's the question, because yeah. we were in, number one, with technology, uh, when I was in anyway, technology was forbidden almost. I mean, it was like yeah. a terrible thing. You cannot have uh, the iPads and all these, like every job witness is like, it's part of their uniform now to have a tablet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And before that, now it seems like, to go to your point, there's just signing their rights away. Because my whole thing is that, um, I'm, I mean, and you guys can correct me, because I'm, I'm still working through your video about the Shepherd of Flock book. And um, I think it was, it seemed like the language was kind of legally saying that um, yeah. publishers are no longer members or something like that. But it also said something kind of weird in this app video that I saw, that maybe publishers, could also they have to like surrender their data and all of this other kind of stuff too and i'm thinking like okay why is this a you know what usually when you sign up for app agreements you have you know terms and conditions and licenses and stuff like that and you have to sign up and agree to them why is becoming a member of a church also signing away your 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 data rights i mean that don't it, like one doesn't even go with the other like if I was joining a gym and they said, okay, and also we have the right to give away your, you know, information. It's like, okay, well, why would I join this gym? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, you know, even on JW.org, um, when you go to start a publisher account, which they're wanting everybody to do now, it even says, if you read the fine print, if you are a minor, under 18 your adult parent or guardian has to be right there and help you with it so they need this permission so i mean it's just a big legalese mess when how do you collect all this data and have them sign up for accounts and still go by the gdpr you know grabbing all of this data so every JW who signs up this account, they have this disclaimer and they have to okay it. Right. And the thing of the matter is, is membership, if you were watching, because I know Jehovah Witnesses always be watching our uh <laughs> oh, yeah. you know all out there. Yeah. Okay, so if you're watching and you're not because we have non Jehovah Witnesses that peek in every now and again, um yeah. membership in the Jehovah's Witnesses. It's not only vital to them believing that they will be saved and they won't be killed by fireballs and an impending doom or Armageddon. They yeah. don't have a choice to say, you know, like with apps, no, I don't agree with the data thing, so I don't want to do that. 
they actually believe that it's one and the same. I mean, they don't have a choice to say, no, I don't want to agree with my information being shared because it's yeah. time I'm now in with membership in their church or Kingdom Hall, as they say. So yeah. membership in the Kingdom Hall also means giving away all your information, people. Yeah. 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 And that Heather Gilbert comment that is up right now. Oh, yeah, I love JW.org. I'm glad they have it because I get more information there and videos there than anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. It's a great source. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm glad they have it there. I just wanted to reminisce about my childhood as a as a JW. It was very funny the, that we were barely allowed to like turn on the computer and stuff, and now they are like, let me uh, let me find it on my tablet for you. Let me find it on your uh, on my tablet, or give me your phone number. Give me your phone number, and I'm like, really now. Is that what you want? Like, is is this how you're de how you're dealing now? Like, whoa, that. <laughs> All right, so you guys, we have entered the uh, uh, part of the stream yeah. where we are now taking questions and answers for our guests. And we did say in the beginning of, sh of the stream that we have Stacy here, but we're not going to have her for long. So, Stacy, did you have any final thoughts or anything you wanted to share with us? Uh, yeah, so kind of in line about what you are talking about, you know, um, it wasn't that long ago when uh, Jehovah's Witnesses were not allowed to use, or it was extremely found, frowned upon to use social media. And right. I, um, I remember very clearly when I was checking YouTube answers for something completely non-related to JW stuff, and I was a JW, very, very devout. <laughs> Um, I happened to come across a comment of this lady um, saying that she used to be a JW and she's not anymore and she's so glad that she got out and it was a terrible experience and I only got that far before I just like my my heart started to race like feet out of my chest and I turned my phone off started praying <laughs> you know like I it was a terrifying feeling so even though you know sometimes I can be a little I want to maybe abrasive with my activism when it comes to certain certain uh, especially, particularly elders. Um, I do have a little bit of uh, empathy for ones at the cards and, and, and whatnot because it is terrifying and they probably will close their ears and not want to hear what you're saying. But when they do wake up, which is probably going to be, which will be on their own terms, mm -hmm. they're going to remember you. And so even though I don't remember any specific thing about this lady, what she said in that on, on Yahoo answers <laughs> this was like 2000 and i don't know six or seven um it stuck with me and i still remember it like it it will stick with them so even if they block it out and like so for anyone out there who wants to do activism who wants to start speaking out don't be discouraged uh, you, like you said you've got jw's coming on you got on jw's coming on and they're like oh this is pointless and uh it's not it's never pointless <laughs> there's always yeah. somebody who's gonna remember what you've done even if they don't remember the message they remember that you know something was wrong and someone was speaking out so that's exactly why i, I have to, to go to thank you all so much for having me on Bye. thank you so much stacy for joining us thank you for telling your story and giving us activism yes, tips thank y'all so come back <laughs> yeah, yes definitely so come come back bye mike and kim and bye ladies bye, bye. bye. okay i will thanks you know, Thanks, guys. I mean, that's exactly why I want to go to Vessel because I know it's only the JWs taking those free tours. Like, you, you know, no normal, like, worldly person is going to be like, of course, that's their battle. So I'm like, you know what? I actually want to do that. I actually want to do that and uh, just bother them about the child sexual abuse and about all the all that stuff so i'm like yeah i, I want to do that and uh, i i don't know how long it will take for them to throw me out i don't know if they <laughs> girl if, they if john cedars could make the whole tour and they didn't throw <laughs> him out and even gave him a guided tour hey I'm sure you'll be welcome with open arms. I don't recommend 
going into an assembly by yourself because when I did it, an elder literally picked me up off my feet and carried me into the parlor. I wish they would touch me, PJ. Yeah. I wish they would touch me because I would go ballistic. Like putting your hands on me. Yeah. They're they're not afraid to catch women if you go in there. Uh, okay, well, then they're not, they not afraid to catch these balls in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, another thing is that uh, Telltale also did go to, to war. No. Is there, like, main battle at Warwick now? It did, right? Yeah. yeah. My brain still works. I have one functioning brain cell, y'all. <laughs> that caused the campaign. Anyway, uh, and he went there, and they... <laughs> They were like, uh, are you Owen Morgan? And he's like, like that Mar- Mariah Carey video, like, I don't know her. He's, right. he's like, you, I love you. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like he, he filmed the entire trip he took to battle. And uh, that was another atheist activist with him who had no affiliation with um, Jawa's witnesses. And it and the whole video you can see uh, Oven is like so out of his his like mind he's like 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 keep chill keep chill don't don't get made don't get made you you made it inside all you need to do all you need to do is just not get caught and uh, they were in the uh, in the Hey, in the car and the security guard was like it's like um are are you related to Owen Morgan and he's like no I'm a, I'm a Jehovah's Witness these are my studies and I, I'm just bringing them to battle you know for the spiritual experience and they bought it he's like and and he made it and but people were like telling them like they were following him around battle and it's like so creepy like really is that what you is that what you're doing now and i'm like i'm like if you know his name you know his name you know who he like it's impossible not to recognize the guy he has a very like recognizable face in my opinion and you know his full official name over morgan and you let him into battle at that point either you're an apostate and you're deliberately letting another apostate in like <laughs> you're cool yeah. or or like and that that just prove <clears throat> that just proves battle actually watches apostate material they just got exposed it like <laughs> how can you be that deaf if you know like if you recognize that's oh shit yeah that's that guy He's, he's he's against us. You could be like, uh, nee, Well, look, it's Dalkin. He made it as far as the guardhouse there. They wouldn't even let him in to serve papers, legal papers on the governing body. Yeah. So they know who all of us are. And it's funny, um, back when we were talking about um, the JWs who are trolling our channels and then wake up later, it's so funny because we've actually had several people email us through the years and apologize for doing that (laughs) and i just get the biggest kick when i get one of those emails and they're like you probably don't remember i was posting under you know such and such and i was really mean to you guys and called you names and wished you were dead and that jehovah would kill you i'm awake now and i'm so sorry for that (laughs) (laughs) yeah we get that a lot those were the those are the best emails (laughs) I can imagine because yeah. I'm in a lot of JW sites and obviously I'll try and plant some seeds and then I get the most abusive message and then sometimes they come back to me and they're like, I'm sorry, I've looked into the research you've said, I shouldn't have like, but I think we are going to do a future show hopefully on them. Like some of the JWs, they're just so vital, like they, they will just completely attack you. Yeah, well, like, see, in, they're actually programmed to do that. Think about how we were trained to handle things in the door-to-door work. We were trained to be more nice, yes. Mm -hmm. But we were always ready to defend our biblical views. Now imagine taking that to an ex-Jehovah Witness where Watchtower printed 
years ago, if it wasn't for the laws of the land, we'd have to stone apostates. So that that facade that they use at the door to be these nice, well-dressed, Bible-toting Christians now becomes an absolute hate mechanism when it comes to ex-members. And then, you know, we've had quite the experience the past couple of years with, well, actually the past seven years, with XJWs that, you know, for some reason just get offended by something you say or do or you're friends with this person or you said this in your video or you believe this or you don't believe that and they just start attacking you and they just will not stop and yeah. so you know trying to deal with all of this behind the scenes that's the hardest part of activism yeah, yeah. you know and yeah. i love it you know when new activists start a youtube channel and it's so sad to see they don't last long but those that keep doing activists you know have my utmost respect because you have to grow oh, really yeah. thick skin and you put do. up with a lot of bs behind the scenes and yeah on youtube because they will even do videos bashing you and that's when I yeah. let shine. <laughs> we just sit and laugh at them and mock them. Yeah, just just turn that mocking upon them, and it's like you know, hey, look, it, it, this, mean, this is the way I look at it. Kim and I have gone after, like all of you have, we've all gone after a multi-billion-dollar corporation. Yep. Who the hell do you think you are, a little Bible bully? I mean, mm -hmm. we're going after a multi-billion dollar corporation. So Worldwide. For, yeah, so for some little Bible bully to, you know, clickbait us, who the hell are you? And it's so funny because <laughs> the latest is Mikey's evil because he's misused the King James in a disingenuous way. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I usually, I usually have an easy way to respond to that. Uh, is that I strive to go to hell in all religions. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know what? I'm fine. I'm cool. I'm chilling. If it's actually real, I still can say that I lived with my best conscience and yep. that I, I actually considered, I I considered these children first and and women's safety and people's safety first yeah. over over looking good and and religion and i and i uh, actually if you take a look at my youtube channel and what i'm what i'm all about i'm not just against djws because they are far from the worst or the biggest or the the shadiest or however else you want to call them like they are not the worst out there they are terrible they are just vile they are just rep like reprehensive but all in all we we need to keep in mind they are not the only one and uh, they are not the only ones out there who are doing who who are committing abuse who are covering up child abuse who are covering up domestic abuse in general who are um sitting on billions of money look at the vatican they are sitting on trillions upon trillions of dollars worth of art and money and gold and all that and they are just sitting on it instead of donating it using it for something actually useful like education they use it to sit on and look at what they're doing now i don't know if they're doing it in other countries but here in the united states all of these dioceses catholic dioceses are filing bankruptcy so they don't have to pay for all of these child, you know, abuse survivors. And it just infuriates me. And that's why, you know, we don't just stick to Jehovah's Witnesses. We cover any beliefs, you know. We're not anti-God, we're anti-religion. We actually do exactly. believe in a higher source. Like, and like I don't even like the name Christian because it's gotten such a bad incantation now. You know, it's just such a bad label. That the minute you say you're Christian, it's like, oh, you know, one of those people. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, so weird to me that people are like, and in my book, people uh, misunderstand me when I say I'm an atheist. No, I'm an atheist in the way that I don't really care. Like, if, if God is proven to be true, I will be the first to admit it. Like, fuck, yeah, I was wrong. Okay, kudos. You proved it. Cool. 
thought See, that's that's kind of the same thought process I have because we've all been indoctrinated to believe that the Bible is the inerrant word of God. This is God's handwritten letter to us. <laughs> then shouldn't we be able to read that letter for ourselves instead of having a minister dictate to us what that letter says or to exactly. imply to imply that we're all too stupid to figure that letter out for ourselves that's that's exactly. the worst thing that anybody could do is to tell you that this is god's written word for all of mankind oh and by the way um if you don't believe it you're going to go to hell that's what some Christian groups say. Oh, by the way, if you don't believe it, you're not going to get into the new system of things. Oh, by the way. So every group uses that same control mechanism to control your lives, to control your minds. But ultimately, it comes down to controlling your money. And that's what it is. It's all about control of the money. Well, we even had someone talk to us on the phone conversation and I remember this so plainly it's been a few years but I still remember it clear as day and he's never been a JW but he's in the community and he does videos and he told me that he thinks it's his calling to educate the JWs and us ex JWs because we're so ignorant of the Bible yeah that was an answer <laughs> That pissed Molly, me off more than anything. Molly and I actually did a reaction video to an ex Jehovah Witness Christian who made a yeah. video, we will not say his name here, that was calling out people of non, of, that didn't have faith, but ex Jehovah Witnesses specifically. Yeah. And if I could just say something about this, because a lot of the guys who follow the glass table and follow us individually, you might even understand, know that. You know, some of us are trolled because of our lack of non-belief. I know recently yeah. um, it's been a uh, explosion with extra Jehovah Witness Christians, and I'm keeping it real, y'all. Extra Jehovah Witness Christians seem to be employ the same mechanisms of shunning that y'all claim in these groups. Yeah. That y'all so mad that the Watchtower is doing. Y'all in these groups. The Watchtower shunning leads to suicide. Shunning leads to suicide. Okay, all that protest is good and fine. But then on the flip side, you get mad because somebody explaining the Bible differently than you yep. or yep. don't believe yeah. in the Bible the way you do or don't believe in the Bible at all. Your mission should not be to ex Jehovah with other ex Jehovah Witnesses. Go get the Jehovah Witnesses out the Watchtower. Leave us alone. Exactly. And you wouldn't believe some of the hateful, mean, mean messages and videos that have yeah. been done against us. And yeah. I know all of you, you know, same thing, no matter what yeah. you believe or don't believe, you know, the same yeah. thing. It's like, why can't they just leave people alone? Let them believe what they want. Mm -hmm. And if we want to talk about something we found in the Bible or somewhere else, we are guaranteed by the constitution of the United States to talk about that on our YouTube channel. So those yep. other guys can go to hell. But I know what you mean about the shunning. Because even though we still believe in a higher source, you wouldn't believe how many Christian friends that used to call us all the time. We haven't heard from them in years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not only yeah. have you not heard from them, they will block you. And I'm just going to keep it real because some of y'all is probably even watching. But we are the glass <laughs> table. We keep it all the way real and transparent. Some of y'all will even go out your way to block and even start rumors or even talk about people. Yeah, and then, you know, and some of y'all on even even some of the videos that be made against well, y'all know videos be made against me, or in Kim and Mikey, y'all on those on those videos making clown comments, yeah. like we don't see y'all. And that's 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 unfortunately is still the residual effect of being yes. in a cult, okay. and yeah. it takes some people longer to deprogram from that yeah. behavior yeah. pattern than it does others. You know, I, I can remember when Kim and I first came out, we started posting on what was then JWN, now it's JW, um, JWWitnesses.com or whatever it is. What was interesting is because we got our daughter and our son-in-law out, we actually started posting as a family. And a lot of people started saying, wow, I can't believe you guys deprogrammed so quick. 
But what everybody didn't realize at that time is that we had been, you know, pouring over Watchtower literature for a year previous. So And other stuff. Yeah, so we were already deprogramming and preparing ourselves to come into the XJW community. And that's what a lot of the friends don't understand. You know, we just didn't wake up and started posting our feelings and everything else. It's, we already had a year's worth of study and research behind us. And even within that whole year, I i mean, I read Crisis of uh, Conscience. I read um, In Search of Christian Freedom. And that was a huge eye opener because I don't know how many of you friends read um, In Search of um, Christian, Christian Freedom. By Raymond Franz. By Raymond Franz. But when I was reading that, that's when I started really beginning to realize that Jehovah did not protect his word because he allowed Watchtower to tamper mm. with it. Now, it's interesting because when you read Raymond's book about that, you he will blatantly point out where Watchtower has changed the words to fit their agenda. Now, why Raymond Franz never concluded for himself, you know, this can't be God's word because Watchtower has tampered with it. I don't know whether he made that connection and he just didn't want to make it public for fear of some of the backlash. But you know what? I don't have a problem with that because this book is systematically being used to ruin lives, ruin mm -hmm. families. And in my opinion, it's got to be dissected right down to the little tittle because yeah. this is the book that is being used to harm human society and it's especially not, in especially in the christian society and it's yeah. not just the judea christian bible like we've mentioned in some of our other videos it's the jewish talmud you know all their writings the torah um the quran and yeah. uh, most of these cults will make their own bible they will have their own bible their own and book. use it to agenda like the, the mormon's Mormon bible enough. Yeah, the Mormon yeah. Bible, it has the um, Book of Mormon right in it. It's, you know, put together in the same book. So, you know, they all do the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Trent. Uh, yes. You know, it, it's, it's, it's a really difficult thing because, like for Kim and I, you know, and this is something that all of us struggle with is this whole concept of, of God. Who and what is what is God? Do you have faith in God? Well, if you don't have faith in God, then, you know, you're an atheist, yada, yada, yada. We, we've all heard that entire story, and we've actually lived it for most of our lives, right? So when you come out of a cult, one of the first things that you need, you want to do is you either have to jump into another religion so that you can automatically, and you know, be saved, because once you leave the, the saving foundation of Watchtower and realize it's all bullshit, well, what religion do I join now so that I can still be saved? That is so true. It, it, yeah. it, it weighs on everybody's mind. Now, do we have a heavenly father? Well, it, it, this is really interesting because I really wasn't gonna do this, but if you guys don't mind, I'll, I'll do it right here. Does he have a few minutes? Sure, take the floor. Okay. And look, you have all the time you need. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to put this in a video, but I guess I'll just do it here live. Oh, a pretty video. <laughs> oh, wow. I think most of you will agree with this statement that every Christian will tell you that you are a child of God. We're all God's children. Is that a correct statement or is that a lie? That's the correct statement, sir. Okay. Now, every Christian will use that statement in their own religion, in their own cult. So you can only be a true child of God if you're a Jehovah Witness. You can only be a true child of God if you are a Baptist. You can only be a true child of God if you're a Calvinist. Whatever Christian religion you belong to, they all use that same thing with the qualifier. Okay. Now, let me show this really plain and simple for a long time on our videos i have been saying learn to claim your own sovereignty 
Now, some Christians will do videos saying, well, see, Mike doesn't believe in Jesus as your Savior because, he you know, making he's God. a statement, yada, yada, yada. It's like, no, you don't. <laughs> you're I'll not, say some of them videos, by the way. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you're not connecting the dots. Right. Right now, I am going to use a situation in the world, and it's not the COVID virus. It's Prince Harry and Meghan. What did he just do? He just renounced all of his royal duties, right? Yeah. Okay. And he's moved out of the country and moved to Canada. Do you guys think, even though he's renounced his status, do you think that he needs a mediator to still get the queen uh, mother, or do you think he still has <laughs> direct access? Grandmama? <laughs> what do you guys think? He still he has, has direct ac access, right? Mm -hmm. So in yeah. the Christian philosophy, theology, if we are all God's children, do we not have direct access? And I'm going to qualify that. When Jesus taught us to pray, what did he say? Our Father who art in heaven. You have direct access. You don't need a mediator. But that's what religion has done to all of us. They have taken away our royal bloodline from our Father. Now, whether you believe in God or not, I really don't care. But the theology is in place. And that's what I'm going after. So when I say learn to claim your own sovereignty, learn to recognize our Father. You have that direct line without a mediator. Now, I and know that's going to be hard. And I know that's going to be hard for many, many Christians to understand and, and begin to comprehend that because, you know, the Apostle Paul said, well, you know, we have one mediator, one baptism, yada, yada, yada. But also reflect on what I said about Revelation chapter 2, how that Jesus Christ puts the Apostle Paul in a category as a false prophet. So I would also like to say to what's your, your point, Mikey? is that I read a book by an ex-Jehovah Witness uh, psychologist or psychotherapist, Bob Zeman, if you're on the line, I'm very sorry if I got it wrong, the credentials, but um, it wasn't, she has several books for ex-Jehovah Witnesses. Uh, I found helpful, The Shun's Survival Guide, but the one that I'm thinking of is Healing Through, I'm sorry, I'm getting the name wrong, Healing Through Something Handbook for Jehovah Witnesses or something like that. Thanks, I'll put it in the uh, comments. But she says that it's really important is something that Mikey actually said here that you have to, and it's a mistake that I made, and that's why y'all coming after me so hard because I'm I identify as agnostic now, uh, after adopting Christianity after leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses. So one thing that she said that actually Mikey said it um, is that you have to be very careful and to not to quickly uh, begin to adopt belief systems or be into um, after you leave in the Jehovah's Witnesses that you are now in a, a, a space where you are allowed to think freely, you are now to think, allowed to think critically. And that was a mistake that I personally made. I quickly uh, went to a church. I quickly tried to move up within the ranks, if you will, because y'all church is a business. It's just like, you know, it's almost equivalent to the Jehovah's Witnesses. There's a lot more freedom, but then there's not. So we'll talk yeah. about that maybe on another show. But at the same time, you know, quickly uh, uh, trying to uh, we fill in the gap. Because one thing um, I think uh, Kim and Mikey touched on in one of their videos is that when we have that mindset as Jehovah Witnesses that there must be a true religion out there, that there must be something true out there, we, we begin searching. Me, okay. I went through Messianic Judaism. I went to like a Hebrew roots cult. I um, quickly moved to uh, a Christian non-denominationalism before I uh, was three months shy of a role in seminary school, before I took a second look at the Bible outside of the Jehovah Witness Bible, which is very important because the Jehovah Witness Bible is very much a cult Bible and not like the main Bibles yeah. that translations that Christians use. But when I even took a look at that, I started to have questions. See so, go ahead, Kim. I mean, Mikey. I'm sorry. Go I see ahead. both of your names here. Oh no. Um, 
you know, I just wanted to mention, you know, that we have had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations, a lot of Skype talks with um, credentialed psychologists, um, you know, therapists. I mean, these yeah. are professional therapists. And we've read a lot of books and we've watched a lot of YouTube videos from these, you know, uh, Dr. Romani. I mean, she's one of our favorites and she is a licensed psychotherapist. We have to remember that what these religions do, whether it's conscience or unconscious, is they take your self conscience, the self confidence. Right. They make you feel like nothing. They keep reminding you how much you are a sinner and that no matter how good or no matter what you do, it's never good enough for God the Father. And they take away everything you are. They take away everything we are as a person, as an individual. And that's what we always try to combat. You know, I just you just flashed up a comment here from somebody that they're they're spiritual, but they're not religious. And people in cults have a hard time separating the two because religion is synonymous with being a spiritual person. I'm going to use another illustration because, you know, when you leave the Bible, it's automatically assumed you've lost faith in God. Whoever you believe God is, I really don't care. But I'm going to explain how I view faith at this point in my life. Something could change, of course. <laughs> you know, if God comes down and taps me on the shoulder, I better damn well pay attention on that day. <laughs> but, you know, I, mean, I think... Sorry, no, I ahead. think people understand that when I say I'm an atheist, I don't mean I'm against belief and faith. I think belief, spiritualism and faith is all good. Like, um, if you find a belief system that actually works for you and strengthens you and makes you a better person, amen, do it. But you see, the thing is, you must also consider the fact that I found the belief system or lack of belief that works for me and makes me a better person. Right. And you don't have a right to come to me unannounced, uninvited, and uh, without knowing me and start preaching at me. I don't do that to you. I don't go to you and shove the books that have make me an atheist down your throat so you cannot come unannounced on my facebook page unannounced on my twitter on my youtube channel on my emails in my messages on my door knocking on my door trying to cram it down my throat and people don't understand that religion and faith are, are not the same things right. like religion is organized man-made bullshit for money like, what else would you call it when uh, in medieval Europe they were selling uh, tickets to heavenly forgiveness for yeah. money? For, for money, <laughs> exactly. Uh, what else yeah, can you call Pope. it? The Pope was selling yeah. forgiveness. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but faith is a completely personal, intimate, private matter that I respect and I hold, I hold dearly. If you say. I'm a Christian and I believe in this and that, but you're not being like, and you need to too, and you're nothing if you don't. I'm good with you. I have Christian friends. I have Christian YouTubers that I like because their content is good, even, even though I disagree with the fact that they keep dragging God into the conversation, but the conversation is still awesome and quality. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, for all the Christians who might who might feel like they are stuck in a fundamentalist loop or something like that. Uh, God is Grey is an amazing channel. Uh, she's actually, um, uh, she was like a fundamentalist and she, she deprogrammed herself with like 10 to 15 years of research that she's sharing right now on her YouTube channel. So it's an awesome source of information on a more progressive more 
may I say, Jesus-like Christianity. Mm -hmm. That's actually just, about life. If I could just interject for a second, mm -hmm. um, and also it's almost a shameless plug. Um, Molly and I have a new segment show, whatever, live stream. It's called Ducking Religion. Um, it's not ducking religion like we just mad at religion, but more of a uh, program where we talk about uh, harmful dogma and mm -hmm. policies of lots of religious systems. So you'll get a lot of our thoughts and opinions on that. Um, yeah. And Molly is really good with this. We're going to talk about that a lot uh, next <laughs> Tuesday. So anyway, we actually have a main program, you guys. Thank you so much for staying with us. And we are an hour and a half in our show. Um, wow, that went as, fast. Didn't it go by fast? It's, it's six people. Yeah. If y'all can sit there and watch oh, some, of these activists, some of these other activists <laughs> with larger platforms for two and three hours, y'all can stay here with us and chat with us. So um, what we're going to do, and we're hoping Kim and Mikey, because you guys have uh, been around a lot longer than Spen uh, Spencer. Why am I saying my name? Molly and I. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys can fill in the blanks here. We have a presentation uh, that we kind of put together, and we've kind of combined forces here. So we're hoping that you guys enjoy it. So um, Emma and everybody else, let me know if you can see the screen that's coming up. Um, here we go. And again, we're, we're moving through. Is this, can you see that? Yeah. Yep. Is that the first one? Yeah, I think that, that is, is the first one. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Emma. Take it away. Um, so that was a um, Watchtower Victims Memorial Day. So I think that was the second one that I'd done. Um, which was the top two posters there. And then I'll put 2017 on here as well. I wish I'd have got better pictures, but um, yeah, I took better pictures in later years, but I literally put these on the fence of my local kingdom hall. All righty. And that was the Watchtower Victims Memorial Day 2018. And my friend Anthony helped me do these. Who He's not actually an extra Havers witness. He's my next door neighbor. And I started talking to him about being an extra Havers witness. And he started to come and help me. And he helps me with my regular activism. And this year, we decided to go out into our town as a castle. And it has the castle grounds where there's all like flowers and bits of field and stuff. So we actually took the posters down there that year. But after we put these on the Kingdom Hall, we went into the train station, came back 20 minutes later, and the posters had gone. So we wow. were like, whoa, somebody was watching us, waiting. But it is like the fourth time I think I'd done it. So, And then the next slide shows that we, we waited a couple of hours, and I went back and put this poster back on the Kingdom Hall fence that said you really sat there waiting for these posters, Shame you're not so quick to act on child sex abuse. We're watching you too. I love it, John. Look, Emma, don't play. Don't come for Emma. And let me just, can I say something? Emma, you did a video about this, didn't you? Am I mistaken? Um, not, not this one, no. Oh, okay, because I thought I saw a video of you, or maybe you were talking about it in the groups, about them just going and taking yourself so quickly. Oh, uh, that would yeah, that's probably sharing shoes that, yeah. that was this year. Yeah. That they, they do. Okay. They take they take my posters down within 20 minutes. I swear they follow me. I don't know how they know. All right. In this slide, um, I, I actually have a close-up of this newspaper here. Um, this is uh Chessa's activism on display here. Um, let me get see if I have a closer look at this newspaper here. And Tessa, maybe you can tell us a little bit about the slide. Okay, so um, I kind of made slides. I'm terrible at PowerPoint. I learned it for the first time for this project specifically. <laughs> um, but I was- You did great. Slides and just, mm. Thank you. <laughs> Going through um, how things progressed. So basically, um, this was an article. It was a newspaper uh, printed by the Philadelphia Inquirer by David Gambacorda, who is an investigative reporter. And um, I had been, around the XJW community, but when I left, it kind of took some time for me and uh, just tried to sort some things out. But I ended up coming back in 
and my father actually was really uh, involved. Uh, Kim and Mikey, I've actually contacted you before. My dad was a huge fan of yours. Mm -hmm. um, he used to go to lunch with Barbara and Joe, um, and he loved watching John Cedars as well. So um, he kind of got me more interested in telling our story. I didn't feel like our story was significant enough, honestly, to be anything that would be featured or be useful. Um, but this was the first time that I really felt that I had a voice because I reached out to David Gambacorda after I'd spoken to Barbara Anderson for a while, and um, he was really interested in hearing about our story for our family, and he had already covered a bunch of um, amazing child sex abuse articles in the past highlighting watchtowers uh, and discrepancies. And so uh, this was really my first dip into public activism. And uh, I'm not sure if we're going to the next slide about the, um, the ROTC protest rally, but that was the next, yes. Mm. So um, after that article was released, I obviously, you know, we all connect with each other after we come out and have our debut or whatever. Um, so I was talking to a lot of different activists. I got in touch with Sharon Tyson, uh, Emma, I was watching you. I was also watching Stacy, a huge fan oh. of that. So I was trying to connect with everybody. Um, and I got contacted by Pam, who is the secretary for um, Mark Rotzi's uh, office. And she told me about a sex abuse survivor rally that was happening in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And uh, Barbara had got kind of talked to him too, I guess, so they asked if I could make the trip. And it was very spontaneous, um, but I ended up being able to go and it was amazing. And that was the first time that I met um, a bunch of people in that middle photo that were really interested in advancing policies to protect um, human rights. And it started blowing my mind. I started seeing ways that I could actually interact with the government or with my local community and actually have an impact. So that was really the catalyst that kept me going in activism is, is feeling not only that I had a voice, but that also I could do something about it. Very nice. Oh, Spencer, I think you're on mute. Oh, I was saying, yes. go ahead. <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, Chessa, go ahead, girl, but you couldn't hear me. But yeah. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Chessa. And then our next um, slide here, Emma. Okay, so this was 2018, and I can't remember, it, and I'm not going to say if I can remember, somebody messaged me and said, can you put my story out there? Abuse that happened to me, so I was like, okay, so then I put it online, and then I had more people come to me saying, I've seen you put that abuse story out, can you put mine out? So then... I printed some off and took them to the London protest with me and put them on a board that um, Louise had done a board with like um, child sex abuse and people's experiences. So I took them to London and pinned them all on that board. Mm -hmm. I really want to do something similar in Hungary, like uh, get the stories out, reach out to people and uh, help form reform policy because in Hungary, but there is basically no way in hell you're you're getting any information on child sex abuse, especially mm. this pinpointed to an organization, because uh, uh, and I keep mentioning it, but it's important for all the people who watch us for the first time or stuff like that. In Hungary, uh, the law is that it only counts as abuse if you need more than eight days of hospital care to recover mm. from the injuries. That's when they start uh, prosecution. That's bad. Jeez. That's um, horrible. That's um, horrible. And these were, um, this was the first London protest I went to. Um, and these were t shirts that I made for Anthony at the top, my mate Draven, me, and then my dad. Um, I've got to say thank you to my dad. He was never a JW. My mum chose the religion over him, and he has literally drove us uh, twice now to London which is about, for us, a four-hour drive there and a four-hour drive back. So, yeah, I have to thank him for that. So, next slide, if you're there. And this, I've literally got this banner behind me now. Um, I dug it out of my wardrobe. That was the first banner um, I took to the London protest. And the funny story was, because we got lost at the big XL building in the car park, we, we missed the prep tour. So we didn't realize we wasn't allowed to put banners up in this big Excel ex exhibition center. 
So as we came up from the car park, I says, well, let's make the most of it. Let's put our banner up and walk through the arena. Now, this arena was round packed of JW, so it had been the dinner time. So children were going past, reading the banner out, and I got my dad in a wheelchair pushing him, and we got like three quarters of the way through the arena, and the security guard come up to us and said, you've got to take your banners down in here. You're not allowed them inside the building. So he was like, oh, okay. So he says, right, but I'll direct you through the crowd anyway. So he made all like the JWs move out the way so I could wheel my dad through with his wheelchair. And then we got to the outside portion where everybody was standing and we told him that we'd put the banner up and there was like, oh, no way, I can't believe you did that. But we was unaware. So, yeah, it was extra activism we got to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's my dad there in the left. Um, and there's some uh, posters. I think there was a hundred people over the two weekends turned up to protest from 13 different countries. So it was great. And Maybe they tell us. <laughs> this poster had to feature this because I spoke to the lady whose daughter, who was five, who made this poster, and it just says everything. People should love each other even if they believe something different and from a five-year-old and on the right it shows that even at the protest in the car park people took the opportunity to put posters in the cars and yeah where all the witnesses were also parked all right well we have entered before we go to pj um emma you have some clips that you want to show oh yes so let me get to those and um, I'm going to show them and maybe you can tell us a little bit about them before. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the well, person that's in the clips? Yeah, this was Louise who um, helped organize the London protests. And I just thought she made some great points about why physical protesting at conventions do work. All right, here we go. Her story, all the newspaper articles up on a board. And somebody came up to her and, and just said to her face, you're lying, this is all lies. And she was saying, this is about me. These are newspaper articles about me. And Mark Sewell is in prison for 14 years. I'm not lying. And so then he said, oh, well, how long ago was it? It was years ago. Why can't you just get over it? Who knows who would be walking past and not being able to look, not being allowed to look, but secretly taking note and contacting us later or Googling later or looking up JW facts later. This protest was absolutely not a failure. It was absolutely a success. I have one more clip here. The audience for us was never really Jehovah's Witnesses. The audience was the wider public. Do you remember the Warwick protest? They weren't trying to get people in Bethel to come out and leave Bethel. It wasn't for the, the, the employees in the Warwick. It was for the publicity they got. And remember what publicity they got. They ended up on a Canadian documentary that got out to 33 million people. So I'm not saying we're going to have that success. I'd love to be able to promise it. But, but who knows? Who knows? So yeah, right. she made some excellent points there because I know a lot of people diss the physical activism that we do, but she made the point there, like, and I always say, it's not always for the JWs, it's for public awareness, and that's why I do most of my activism. All right, exactly. Emma. All right, Emma. Exactly. You know, just go along with that. We get so many emails and phone calls from people who never were JWs but are in other religions. Mm. Look at the Mormons, the LDS activists. Oh, my goodness. We've gotten so many emails from them saying, thank you. Because of your videos, we're learning how to be activists against our own church. And they're starting their own ex-Mormon activist YouTube channels. And those against Baptists and Calvinists and Catholics. And we just love it because yeah. they're all getting the word out. And guess what? Every single one of these organizations tries to hide child abuse. Mm. Yep. They're yes. all guilty of it. All of You're them. Right. I mean, I'm not, not sure if you, uh, you guys ever read the CES letter. Uh, 
that uh, that letter is basically a Mormon wrote a letter to the, the church and he he had like these questions and uh, he was like if you can answer these i will go back to the church and he mailed it and it's just um such uh, a great letter and uh, an act mormon activist mr atheist actually covered that letter and um we should do that we should all all cover uh, our doubts and be open about it because that way we can spread awareness to the public life and maybe JWs. Yeah, right. we, we even did an interview with an XJW Mormon, John. It's on our channel. An XJW. Oh, I'm sorry, an ex Mormon. <laughs> an ex Mormon. Yeah, and he was talking about what woke him up and why he left, and a lot of us didn't know that these bishops have a one use, I don't know if they've changed it yet or not, but have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, interrogation with kids, little yep. kids as young as like seven or eight and asking, asking them very explicit sexual questions. Yeah. yeah. I know like with my judicial committee and again we'll have a probably have another we can have a whole probably week of shows about judicial committees um but not only did they ask intimate questions but they went far beyond uh intimate questions because these were my peers as well as some all my judicial committee we had went out to lunch and they were asking me intimate questions about you know I you know, I won't get into it, but you know, what kind of sex I like, how I liked it, when I liked it, where I liked it, you know, it was just so I can only imagine, and this is me as a 20 year old. So mm -hmm. I know that my other people and my relatives and my family had to go before judicial committees much younger. Yeah. And what do you need all of that information from from a child for? Yeah. Why do you I will say briefly, I know it was still a Mormon thing last year because I got involved in uh, Protect Every Child mm -hmm. and that was started by a Mormon guy, Sam Young. Yeah. And he, that was because he had a problem as well with the questions that were directed at his young daughter. Yeah. So it seems like it is still a thing that they are fighting to get ruled out. Thank yeah. you, Emma. I numbing out there yeah. <laughs> it, it wasn't john it was sam young we talked to sam uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 skype interview with him and that's, that's one of the reasons why we interviewed him on our channel so we can get yeah. more xjw's to, to actually see it yeah and share it but and this it. was disturbing because a lot of these mormon bishops were using that one-on-one -on -one time <laughs> to you know groom children mm. molest them yeah. you know so many inappropriate things and mm. the church did nothing about it yeah same thing yeah, there was a, a documentary about mormon um whistleblowers if you will because i don't know if they call them apostates you know because jehovah witness calls us apostates but we'll just call them whistleblowers of the church um heartbreaking stories of marriages that were almost child marriages in a lot of cases mm -hmm. um just you know so these men are not just sick enough to just mess with one child they have the nerve to go an extra mile because they have the plural marriage within uh and let me clarify this because i know that i do have a mormon uh mormon friends here uh that i am talking about the fundamentalist church the one that uh the FLD that, right that broke off from the original church i'm not talking about the other church because they they quit to say that so i'm not talking about yeah. that but even still in the name of the founder because y'all all got the same founder they are still practicing these things and so whether or not you know you guys associate with them or not you know, it's still, it's kind of a black eye because they consider themselves just as Mormon as you are. Exactly. Yeah. Our daughter was friends with an FLDS ex-member. Oh, yeah. And I mean, the horror stories we heard. Oh, my wow. God. 
she was raped at 12 or 13, if I remember correctly. And because she got pregnant, then she became this, you know, abuser's wife. And he had all these women and they could just go rape any young woman they wanted. And if they were got pregnant, then they would become their wife. And it was a horrible life. And I mean, this poor woman is so messed up. And I mean, has such a difficult time. Yeah. And, you know, just like inside of Watchtower, I'll tell you, I have never seen so much mental illness in my entire life. And the horror stories, oh my God. People keep telling me to write a book and I keep saying, no, you don't. You don't. And I just want to, I'll know another shameless plug. I don't know why I do this. But in the, in the May, in the month of May, uh, Molly, and I, Molly has very uh, taken a lead on this with us. Uh, Mental Health Awareness Month is in May. Good. And as yeah. Kim is saying here, like me, I'm very open on my ex Jehovah Witness blog um, that I was predisposed for mental health challenges. But some of yeah. this is exasperated or exacerbated yeah. by some of the fundamentalist religions, yeah. but namely, the reason why we are all connected today is share a bond today is because of the Jehovah Witness religion. Yeah, so I mean, rigid I rules and religions that exacerbates mental illness yeah. beyond a sh stretch of an imagination that you wouldn't. They could even say that almost half of congregations, this is, you know, I, this is just a poll because you know they're really secret. So we do the best we can with polls are either on antidepressants or something of that nature. And I uh -huh. truly believe that. I truly believe it with all of my heart because there was more depressed pioneers in my congregation than I ever knew. Yeah, oh. I mean, it's crazy. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, go ahead. Go ahead, Molly. <laughs> sorry. Go ahead, Molly. So it's crazy because the, the like, I, I was a gloomy, I, I was a gloomy kid all my life. Like, uh, I was always a bit like weird in the head. Like my my mother would always say, like, "You're so, you're so like stuck up, or you're so like stuck in your ways, or you're so this, or you're so that." And and uh, once I I left the organization at first, I was like extremely suicidal because because I felt like, "Oh my God, I lost Jehovah! I lost Jehovah! I I will die! I will be." I am condemned to hell. I will, I will not make it through. And no one understands, especially in Hungary. Uh, well, now it's better, but I was not 18 at the time, so I could not go to therapy without my mother finding out. So obviously, I could not go to therapy because she, she was, she wouldn't understand. She wouldn't pay for it. She wouldn't support it so i was like well you have to make it through and i actually had like uh, three suicide attempts and one murder suicide attempt but i attempted to make chlorine gas from mm. basic chemicals at home and i was like well it will take them out and me out but at least it's all over and this is what fundamentalism does it, it messes up your mind and still it's with me like it looms over me and it flares up and right now with everything being locked up and everything looking this like this apocalyptic it does not do i think any of us well but us us ex-fundamentalists especially ex apocalypse prepare fundamentalists hmm. we we are hit i think harder than than most by it i'm like a hermit crab i don't barely ever go out i'm like nah i really like i i like to stay in bed just not see any human beings thank you very much i i actually <laughs> like that I, I like that like i i like just hanging out with the rabbits not seeing any humans i can go days without actually going out but now it's like everywhere you go you see people are scared you all you hear is this like death destruction financial upheaval losing jobs uh all that and it's just like oh yeah 
it's crazy and it's uh it's affecting us badly so everyone just make sure you're staying in touch with your people um because you <laughs> you need each other you have the internet we have the internet reach out don't be alone as much as we need to be as alone as we can don't be like use the internet and if you're a jw buy a vpn sacrifice those like i think it's 20 dollars or something sacrifice those 20 bucks and reach out to apostates you like like not necessarily any of us if 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 it's not your vibe but if it's yeah, not, yes, and we and we're not your thing there's right. a lot of other apostates which we are going to feature our favorite activists very soon so look out for that it's so like I said, we're the apostates you love to hate. <laughs> oh, no, you guys are right people. I love you guys. I just want to say really quickly, guys, I'm not being rude. I, as the glass table panel probably knows, I have a very crazy pug, and I don't want him to over, her to overpower <laughs> what we're saying here because that happens on the stream. And when I go back to the playback, I'm like, oh, my God, this pug is just like a manic raven dog. So... <laughs> Sorry about that. I mean, you got your babies, your bunnies. Mm -hmm. uh, PJ has her cat. I have a pug that's just emotional and just, you know, all over the place. Mm -hmm. So anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just wanted to interject with that. We guys, we do see you in the comments. Thank you. Keep commenting. And we also, if you have questions for Kim and Mikey, you I, there is a link that we uh, dropped in the comments. Go ahead and join us on the stream. You can come on, on the show, y'all. If you don't want to come on the show, you can also just drop comments in below or questions below, and Kim and Mikey are, is here to answer your questions. So um, we are going. <laughs> we may not like the answers. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. If you got the questions, right? They got the answers. Like he said, you may not like them, but you know hey. Um, I just want to go back and touch on a point. Uh, yes. Yeah. Talked about you know. Jehovah's Witnesses being on happy pills. I just yeah. want to read something that we observed um, when we was in Wisconsin. Remember, there was a meeting one time where um, two elders were on their way to do a uh, circuit assembly because they were giving an experience. So our congregation had the assembly the weekend before, but these two elders had to go two weekends in a row. So the rest of us were in our Sunday meeting and there's a lot of movement going on the phone rang a lot of little disruption and you can see some of the elders running back and forth and whispers well I, when the meeting was done it was announced that one of those those two elders were in a automobile accident and one of them was killed wow. you could tell you could tell which JWs were on happy pills because when that meeting was over just to use a number half of them were sad and crying and the other half was still giddy and laughing yeah and not that we're saying there's anything wrong with happy pills because you know many people do need them but you could see you know how disjointed or you know disconnected the jw's were and mike mentioned that to his mom and she totally oh she vehemently you know disagreed well then she got to talking in the you know field service group and come to find out yeah more than half of them were on happy pills um you know, anti-anxiety pills and things like this yeah. and what kim and i have observed being where we are and having a lot of xjw's contact us over the years we could we could put into a book how many xjw's when they wake up and leave watchtower the antidepressant and the anxiety pills get flushed right down the toilet because they, they don't come to the realization that is the organization that is insane um i will mention one thing um we've been talking to a lot of pimos the past couple of weeks and jw's are loving <laughs> being able to stay home during this pandemic and getting the streaming and many did not dress up for the memorial they stayed in their pajamas and watched <laughs> the memorial but they're loving this 
and they actually don't want to go back have to go back to the kingdom hall get all dressed up and drive you know 30 40 miles to the kingdom hall they want them to stay in online religion i mean for me, it was the opposite because when I left the organization, I and I finally turned 18 after a clusterfuck of suicide attempts and a bad streak of depression and anxiety. Oh, really? Okay, no, we need therapy. I went, I actually snuck out of school, went to a therapist, and she was like, well, first of all, you are missing sleep, so let's get you on a slight. Um, I'm not sure how you call it. We call them like uh, like tranquilizers. Like they make you calmer, and and that I can sleep. And so I did that. And ever since then, I still need that stuff to sleep because I can't sleep. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Amy Maria, for joining us. We have another guest. Amy, can you hear us well? I'm sorry, guys. It, with the live stream, it's always technical issues with sound, whatever. With, I guess, on technologies. Mute. You're on mute, Amy. If you can take yourself off mute. I don't know if I can do it here. Let me see if I can try it. No, it won't let me do it. Okay, so Amy, when you take yourself off mute, there's a mute button right in the application that you're using. And then, uh, there you go. Hi guys, sorry, I had, I'm doing something. I'm multitasking, I had stuff all over my hands. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for joining us, Amy. What brings you here? Kim and Mike I just, here. Um, Is it Kim and Mike? I just wanted to address, hi guys, it's so nice to finally talk to you. I, you were one of the, Kim and Mike, one of the first people I, saw when i was waking up and at first i was like these, these they're crazy that and then I was like, <laughs> they have more insight i have <laughs> so i, I have their effect wanna, on people <laughs> well we're, we're not used to seeing that much personality in in the organization i guess oh, yeah. the, they weren't exactly so right I, I uh i just appreciate you I, I thank you but i wanted to address when you were talking about you know taking the medication a lot of people are under the belief that you know, as Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't, you know, they don't really push therapy or believe in therapy or the medication. And but behind the scenes, I found that my family, because I didn't get the help for the um, sexual abuse that I experienced as a child, and then the guilt that I felt knowing as an older, like an 18, 19 year old that he hurt somebody else after me, it was like, I was the only one that felt guilty, but my family did not know what to do. I was acting out. And instead of helping me, they doped me up. I mean, wow. I was just on so many. So it, it is a kind of a Jehovah's people have to be a happy people. So they can't say that they go to therapy, but they're, they are, they're, they're, you know, or, or taking pills. They shouldn't need them. And you feel like it's a weakness, but my, I felt like I was drugged because they didn't know what to do with me. I had barbaric medical treatments done that cost me my my memory in some ways I'm and so just ridiculous. This. Well, the, the great thing about it is, though, is that um, I was on, when I left, I was on almost, yeah, nine medications, anxiety, sleep, antipsychotic, anti everything you can believe. Today, it's um, after, so I was about out for a year. So after two and a half years later, I am medication free. I have lost nice. 80 pounds. Nice. All right. I, awesome. I mean, Good for you. Go, girl. Mm -hmm. It's just, I have a lot of support though. I know people, sometimes you need the medication to get through the dark time or help you yeah. out and, and, right. and that's it's fine. Layover. And I'm definitely not saying that to go off your medication no. without, you know, without a doctor supervision, but I, I can attest to that. And the question I had to all of you guys as activists is, I had an XJW life coach who very much believes in moving on and not holding on. And I expressed to him, you know, I know when I was 11 years old, I prayed. I prayed so hard to Jehovah, send somebody to help me, send somebody to save me, please send somebody to make this stop, make somebody find out all of this. And I, I told the life coach, I, every fiber of my being knows that there's little girls, little boys in there, women, everybody praying, help me. And, and I want to do something. I know this, I want to be an answer. And he told me basically, 
you you know that's where you feel important that's what you're familiar with um that's where you feel comfortable and that's really not going to do anything right now that's that's a, your way of holding on i i mean i i felt a little discouraged by that but i also want to keep to be realistic i don't want somebody to tell me things i want to hear i want to hear the truth you know yeah well I I just say, go, ahead. go ahead i was just gonna say you know therapists a lot of them have a hard time dealing with this because right. a lot of them do not know the life we led right and yeah. you know bless well, this was an xjw life out. coach that yeah. does seminars all over the country I firmly, I firmly believe that nobody else can tell you when to move on and what yeah. your timeline should be you know that's yeah. all i'm going to say about that you know because the experts know more than i do but i also right. know that everybody does this at their own pace their own time yeah you will know Actually, here and i just want to say and and amy uh thank you again for sharing your story and being so open um with us on our glass table and trusting us our platform to be able to come on and thank share you. your story thank you guys thank you so much and so i just want to say that i identify with you just recently in my extra holy witness blog i was i'm opening up about my challenges uh uh with uh bipolar and i you know the thing of the matter is is that when i go look back over my life as an extra or as a jehovah witness i can actually see you know how me being unmedicated attributed to a lot of uh, the challenges that I faced within the Jehovah's Witnesses and the fact on top of the fact that they didn't really believe in psychotherapy. So I th really honestly think uh, I'm so glad that you were even able to get the help because I do understand the cycles of yeah. trying different medications and they don't work and they work and they work for a while and then you got to start all over again. It's, it can be devastating for someone yeah. who's taking medication I, all the time. I've also found it when I was even though I was going to very a lot of therapy, that's what my family's excuse was. Well, she's rebellious because she has mental issues or she's depressed and that's how we can explain it. It wasn't anything about their, their circumstances that fed that, you know? And, but I had such an attitude with the therapist when I went in there that I didn't use that tool to help me in any way because my, my JW mentality was, oh, they don't have any of the answers. They don't know anything. And it was, it was such a, condescending arrogant attitude for for especially a woman being a jehovah's witness and being born and because you you don't have any self-esteem or you don't feel you feel like you're supposed to your whole life is how do i be humble how am i going to you know win people over without a word and all of this but but as far as the outside world just a very different attitude i was very arrogant in my thinking with the therapist like they couldn't pass i have all the answers really you know you there's nothing you can do to help me really you know and i wonder how many jw's go to therapy with that mentality can i just mm. say something really quickly and then chessa has something she wants to say the bonnie's demons book that i actually talked about earlier she actually has a handbook that you can actually give to therapists in advance and i just want to say that it actually helped me because I actually had a therapist. I went through so many therapists. I even had a therapist that would fall asleep. She was an older lady that would fall asleep on my, my stories about my cult stories. And yeah, that it really devastated me because Is you know, the, you wanna, the, cult code, the cult code for it's therapists? called the cult. Yeah. The cracking the yeah. cult code for the handbook. And when you get, I actually had a therapist who went out of her way to actually purchase the book just yeah. for me, just to deal with me. And I thought to myself, okay, well, this is somebody I need to hang on to. But in her book, it helps therapists help you as an extra yeah. mm -hmm. witness, because as Kim and Mikey was uh, saying, it's really hard to be, I mean, in their videos, I'm sorry, I'm saying, when you look at their uh, videos, they talk about how, you know, how challenging it is to find therapists who understand mm -hmm. who yep. we yeah. are, who our makeup yeah. is, and how we operate. And if they're not a cult expert, which is very few, rare in between, unless you can get somebody like Steve Hassan, which is right. you know mm -hmm. hard to get somebody. It's very, it's a niche uh, psychotherapy. It's really niche psychotherapy, yeah. cult survival, you know, yeah. uh, having somebody who's cult survival. So it's really hard to find. And then I, we don't- I even did learn that from Kim and Mikey. I did learn that from Kim and Mikey. That They were the ones who, who really, I, because I just felt like these therapists, they don't have a, it was kind of, yeah. I felt like, 
the same condescending attitude the elders gave me when when I was a child and the pat on the head, oh, let put it all in Jehovah's hands. You know, mm-hmm. it was that kind of same thing with a therapist. You're you're overreacting or you're, you know, this shouldn't be affecting you how it is. But I, I do have suggestions for people that or a suggestion. It, it, the cult, I, I found a therapist that was a private practice that, that accepted my insurance. And then I, I had just a little bit of a copay with it. But also I did send that book to him first. I emailed him when I set up the appointment, said, this is the book. I can either send it to you or here's the link to order it. Because we live in a really small rural area. There is no spiritual abuse or religious abuse therapist. There is no cult therapist. And you really need somebody that specializes that. And the therapist I went to told me, I have quite a few Jehovah's Witness people that I see, and this book has also helped me understand where their their mentality, where they're coming from, the walls they have up, the wall, you know, what their thinking is, and what they're, they're what they're really dealing with, which they're hesitant to tell him. Right. Thank you so much. You said you had something you wanted to say. Yeah, I mean, I, I love all the comments here, and I just wanted to add a few things. Um, so uh, just to jump into it, my and I had mental health problems my entire life. If I was constantly suicidal when I was in Jehovah's Witness, even when I was pioneering, because I felt like I was martyring myself. I felt like I wasn't worthy, but I was going to be subservient and help other people, and that would make me worthy in some way. Um, but I always had mental health problems when I was inside the organization. And so in my early 20s, it got bad enough, literally bad enough that um, even the elders were okay with me going to a psych, uh, psychotherapist who prescribed me a bunch of medication. I was on 14 yeah. at one time, 14 a day. And um, it just, it just mm-hmm. wrecked me. It wrecked my body. It wrecked my mind. It was awful. And um, something that I've, I've observed about that is that um, elders are against talk therapy because they don't want you to really have a connection with or have a long conversation with the therapist. Yeah. Because what happens when you have a long conversation? They start to say, well, maybe your religion comes into play. And if you look at the wording in the society's articles, they even mention things like be cautious, you know, be cautious if your therapist starts uh, going against your religion because that means that they may be satanic or demonized. Mm-hmm. And so for so many people who have bipolar disorder or who have um, uh, compound PTSD like I do, um, you're unable to really get what you need because what you need is to understand those layers and understand how you regulate and go through that with somebody um, instead of just being fed medication. And uh, now I'm on two medications and it balances me out okay. But um, yeah. you know, I'm, I, I haven't had a suicidal thought in a very long time. When I was in the organization, even on 14 medications, I was still, it was really bad. So, you know, well, the thing about of, that is, just yeah, so too, is as far as the medication, some people have to understand that we talked to a clinical psychologist. He told me, this is literally, cha- you've been on it for so long, this has changed the chemistry of your brain. You mm-hmm. might need some of these. So if your goal is to you know, be medicine free. Don't, why are you thinking that way? It, you don't have to think that you're flawed if you are. He's like, this has changed some of your input and output of the chemical, your chemicals. So you might need something to assist you. And and that's the sad fact of it. You know, it, it's sad, but it's, but it's nothing to carry any, you know, shame about. I, I hesitate sometimes telling some of the XJW community that about not being on any medication. Number one, I don't want them to do anything you know, dangerous. And number two, I don't want them to think that it's a, I'm just happy that I don't, I, I, it justifies and kind of validates me because they were trying to mute me. They did it. I, I, but I have a recording of my mom when I asked her, why, what, why didn't anybody go to the police? Why didn't you go to the police? Why didn't my family? And her exact words were, I didn't know procedure. Right. Mm. And, the, and that's what she told me. They're so in, we're so ingrained, even as extra mobile witnesses, you know, uh, like uh, Kim, uh, Mikey was saying earlier, sometimes we have leftover indoctrination yeah. ourselves and that we, um, and unwittingly, unknowingly sometimes, and maybe on purpose, you know, inflict some of the same harm on each other. Right. So, yeah. I, you know, I thank you so much, Anne Maria, Amy Maria. We have Emma on the backstage. Here, did you have any final thoughts before we um, 
wrap, wrap up? I just wanted to tell you guys, thank you so much. And, and you guys thank you. Are, are impacting people and you're changing people's lives. And, and we, we definitely appreciate it. You're helping thank you this recovery thing. process and thank you. Thank you so much, Amy and Marie. And thank you for joining us. And we're going to bring um, Amy. And thank you. And thank join you, us again. Thank, thank you, you, guys. See you later. I would just like to say to anyone who who is, think, who is freshly waking up and thinking about picking up activism, uh, I, I feel like you need to distance yourself just a bit before you do that. You need to get your therapy. Uh, you need to get on your medications if you need any. You need to just do talk therapy if you don't need any medication because they can easily find out um, if it's like a behavior cognitive problem that can be solved with talk therapy or if it's um, already so bad that it rewired your brain and you need some chemical fixing for it. And... Uh, <laughs> Once you, once you find that out, once you distance yourself enough to be able to think about JWs without harming yourself, because I I have been out, this is my ninth year out, and I have just gotten into activism because this was the time when I felt like I had enough distance, I have a strong enough setting that I can be there for others. Because activism is not just standing here giving talks and then dropping the mic and bye. People are gonna contact you asking for help. Yeah. And you're gonna have to travel. You're gonna have to deal with some politics, um, optics, and you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to be mindful of that. So take a break, um, just get yourself together first, because just like when an airplane loses pressure, you need to put on your mask first before you can help others because you can't help others and die in the process. I heard it first. Yeah, I've heard it first from Molly and that's a good illustration. And I used to get W's or illustrations in the theater credit ministry school. <laughs> oh, yeah. elders, I am working on my illustrations. Oh God. I, I live on the W. Did you, I used to, I was horrible. I used to bomb in the Mine theater. was like, were, 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 it, 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 then finally a G, like, it was so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to give you your sister. We'll give you your counsel after the meeting. I'll be like, "Oh, what did I do now?" So that was, that, that, that was excellent, Molly, and so true. You know, we were overwhelmed when we first, you know, started doing YouTube videos. We were overwhelmed because we weren't expecting all of this wow. behind the scenes. We just thought, "Oh, a couple of loud mouth clowns, you know, mocking Watchtower," and we started doing videos. Oh my God, we started getting, you know, comments and emails and phone calls. And thanks to John Cedars for outing all of our personal information. Everybody was able to get our address and our phone number and our email. So, you know, we got all let, me come back on, let me come back on screen for that. Y'all catch that? He ducks, Jay. All right, go ahead, Kim. You know, and yeah, we had a few death threats that then knew who we were and where we live. Right and put our family in danger but for the most part a lot yeah, were able to contact us and we were able to help and sometimes you know yes you do need to recommend a professional therapist a lot of times they just need to be told breathe it breathe. will be okay right. you know first take time for yourself time is on your hands now and work on you heal yourself find out who you are first you know don't worry about doing activists or on all these forums and stuff because a lot of them are toxic and let me just yeah. say something because a lot of activists quit yeah because mm -hmm. of the toxicity and because yeah. of lack of self-care so you don't yeah. have to be in i know that we are trained that we have to go pre you know it's like you go preach for the watchtower and you're militant for the watchtower and then when you're out of the watchtower you reverse preaching and you're militant as an ex jehovah witness well and everybody that don't agree with you you upset so the thing of the matter is is healing is important important like molly said you can't give from an empty well that's right well you know one of the reasons why 
you know, another reason why Kim and I, you know, jumped in this and started going the way we were going is because the Watchtower Bible Tract Society, their policies will cause imminent danger. And yeah. I think that that's the reason why a lot of us jump into it and want to become activists because we recognize the danger is imminent because your family, your friends who are JWs could be in a car wreck tomorrow and they would choose death over a blood transfusion. Well, my, so the, the danger is real and it's imminent. It could happen tomorrow. And the reason suicides, um, JWs and XJWs committing suicide is so close to our heart and why we try so hard to, you know, get the right kind of help for ones who are just so destitute is my little brother, you know, and of course my mom to this day says, oh, well, he was mentally ill. You know, he was going to commit suicide no matter what. Well, I feel that he was gay. So, you know, that is a strike against you right there in the organization because we know how Watchtower feels about people who are gay or lesbian. And, you know, then you compound all of that. And I don't know if he had a mental illness or not, but he had depression and he committed suicide <laughs> in 2003. So, well, you know, I I'm don't sorry. want to see Watchtower win and another person lose their life and hurt themselves or get hurt or lose their life over, you know, refusing blood, you know, all these children who have died for refusing blood. I mean, oh my God, it just brings tears to your eyes just yes. over, you know, a stupid cult and their parents do this to them. The parents do this to them. I'm so sorry, and Kim. I didn't know that. I'm so sorry. Thank you. And it's so, much, and so etched in our heads that last year my grandpa uh, was hospitalized for uh, an inflammation in his lungs, and he needed he needed a blood transfusion. And basically, uh, out of my blood family, I was the only one who was ever a JW. And still, when I heard, uh, when oh my god, I can't even speak anymore. It's it's half past two a.m. here, yeah. so I'm a bit I'm a bit out of my shuffle. So uh, it was like when I first heard the doctor say he needs a blood transfusion and the doctor handed the, the consent form to my grandma and I was like, he's going to die. It's over. He's dead. The, he can't take the blood. He was never a JW and yet he, here I was in my head already burying him well he ended up dying because mm. his lung he, his lung gave out but but he received he received the blood and but still when the doctor said blood transfusion my brain immediately just went there i have been out for for eight years at that point and and yeah hi jennifer we're so Hi. sorry, Molly. I'm so sorry. Hi, um, Jennifer. Sorry, Hi. I'm the buttons back here, and I'm trying to come on a lot quicker. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Jennifer, why don't you hang on the line? We are going yeah. to actually move to through some slides that we have prepared. Uh, PJ, PJ, you move. You you're down here now. <laughs> you were here. Now you're there. Musical chairs, I guess. So here we go. Um, as we move through the slides, and then Jennifer, we're going to come back and we're going to uh, get to you. Um, okay. and you can tell us why you joined us today. So here we go. Uh, give me a second to do that. Uh, just to keep the conversation going, you guys. And it's so lovely what we prepare here. I'm joking. So uh, here we go. DJ, why don't you tell us a little bit about the slide? I love the shirt, by the way. Yeah, I silently protested my father's funeral, um, and I wore the shirt for his funeral. I covered it up when I first got there with, like, a wrap. And then once the brother got up on stage and started giving the discourse and everybody put their head down to pray, I uncovered it and sat there just silently. I didn't say anything. I was so upset because my father had been inactive since 1975 failed. And they were up there using his death to spread their propaganda. And I wanted everybody to know how I felt about it. It's a cult. 
there it is on the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And you know what? Let me just say something. Um, I actually saw this next clip that we're going to see live. I was actually a new uh, person on um, Facebook in the ex Jehovah Witness community. And let me just say, PJ was one of the uh, first activists that I befriended. We were also shared um, in a newspaper, featured in a newspaper that we're going to show coming up. But when I saw PJ walking there badass with this Colt shirt on, sit in the front row, y'all, protesting at her father's funeral. I said, who is this girl? <laughs> so I'm thinking like if she can do it, and that's how that happens. You know, when you, another activist, activist inspires you, it's contagious. So anyway, let me go ahead and go to this next clip because I'm talking it up. But I was very, 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 very uh, taken away that she would uh, be... Uh, this bold. So let's see if I can find the clip here, and we're gonna just gonna go through the clip. This right. on this way. Okay. What? Me? <laughs> I'm not good at this being seen. of all this is Jesus speaking and he says most truly I say to you the hour is coming and it is now when the dead will hear the voice of the son of God and those who have paid attention will live now let's go down a little bit to verses 28 and 29 Jesus says do not be amazed at this all right so we'll just cut him off right there I don't know why I couldn't cut the clip quicker because we're not trying to hear all that. So anyway, right. other than that, PJ, tell us about the clips that we saw. Well, um, the guy that's given the talk is also the guy that gave the talk when my sister committed suicide when I was hmm. eight years old. Wow. Uh, he was, he, he had um, let his first wife die after surgery, refusing blood when his children were very young. And um, it tore his entire family up. Um, one of his children was in and out of jail three, four times for breaking into stuff, doing drugs, different things. He had a daughter who had been disfellowshipped and reinstated four times. Um, she was in and out of abusive relationships. He remarried six months after his first wife died wow. to a woman that was 11 years younger than him and 11 years older than his <clears throat> oldest. And she abused his children. And then wow. he sat up there and talked about my dad for five minutes and then that was it. Me. And so for the non-Jehovah Witnesses that may be watching our stream today, um, a Jehovah Witness funeral is more of a promotion event or a uh, for the religion itself. Um, I have to say that I finally, uh, when I was Christian, after leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses, I visited a church funeral and it was entirely different. They reminisced on the person, they talked about this person's life, they revered the person, they shared stories. People of the family could actually go up on the podium and actually talk about this person. Whereas growing up as a born in Jehovah's Witnesses, all the funerals that I attended, number one, they were no cassocks there for some reason. They were always memorials, I think. I never really went to a, I went to maybe one funeral in my life where there was actually an open cast or a cast of their period. It was always memorials, but I don't know if that's something strange with them. But anyway, on top of that, uh, their events more talk about their teachings of a new, uh, an, another uh, life or afterlife. Mm -hmm. And they talk about the person's accomplishments within the organization, whether the person was a pioneer, elder, you know, et cetera. And, it's more of a, if you went on a talk or went on a sermon or any service that they have on any Sunday, it's really pretty much the same. They recycle it. They actually have prepared outlines 
or prepared talks just for funerals. So they don't really stray too much from the script. I know it sounds weird, but you know, that's the kind of, that's the life we come from and that's pretty much how they operate. So um, that's what PJ is referring to. It's not a remembrance or you're reflecting on the person's life or celebrating the person's life. You're celebrating the person's achievements within the organization and then actually some services they actually hand out their literature afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or they have it on the table there by the person's picture. Um, I actually have the funeral outline for JWs that the elders give, and it literally says five minutes to talk about the person, and then it gives them a regular outline like it does a public outline. And I have been to JW funerals where there is a casket there, and they will actually have the casket open. I was shocked that you know they would allow that in the kingdom hall but those right. are going far in between yeah and i know yeah, will, memorials. yeah and we'll just mention in the comments you know how could they have a jw funeral at the kingdom hall for suicide um i've never been to one at the kingdom hall for suicide but they will have it they will rent a room somewhere you know like where they rent the rooms for their potlucks well they'll rent a room and have a funeral you know, a memorial for, you know, someone who has committed suicide. At least that's been, you know, my experience. <coughs> when my sister committed suicide, we had to actually pay a funeral home to host uh, us. And that elder gave the talk from the podium in the chapel at the funeral home, mm -hmm. which I had never been to a Jehovah Witness funeral that was in a funeral home ever before. This was the first one. But there was a big argument before this happened with the, el the elders at our congregation about how it couldn't happen in a kingdom hall, how they didn't think an elder should give the talk. This elder um, volunteered. He said it didn't bother his conscience. He acted all big about it and you know I'm sure people were like oh it wasn't that nice of him to do that when she did what she did right oh so yeah it wasn't in the go, kingdom hall yeah before we go to our next segment Jennifer we're not going to hold you on the line because I, I don't know, know how long you have oh yeah um, true. but um before we go to the next segment we're actually going to talk about that a little bit more Jennifer can you tell us why you joined us today and thank well, you for joining us by the way it's Tim and Mike, come on! <laughs> I mean, okay, like I, 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 we're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know you guys don't want it, but like, the, I mean, I've been on my, I've been out since 1994. Mm. Wow. Okay. I was, I was 22. I, I had, I, I had messaged you guys before, like, and oh. told you my story a long time ago. But I don't want to get into my story. It's like way too long. <laughs> I've got like a lot, but I, oh my God, I could comment on so many different things too. <laughs> but anyway, I didn't, I started, um, uh, even though I was out for so long, I didn't start, I didn't get into the XJW community. Uh, some things were going on. I actually wound up moving back in with my parents. Well, they had an apartment and I saw a lot of things that they were doing that I'm like, wait a second. They, they didn't do that when I was a kid. You know, like like going to um, I have a nephew that they have um always plays in the Nutcracker every year, and my parents are going to that and, and paying for the tickets and all that stuff. And I'm like, okay, I confronted my dad and I'm like, Dad, that's Chris. We couldn't even watch that as a kid, you yeah. know, when I was a kid. And it's like like things like that. So I was like, you know, and there's a lot of other things that had happened uh, that I watched things that they were doing with their literature studies. I don't call it Bible study. The literature right. stuff. <laughs> yeah. right. so, I like that one. I'm gonna have to use that one. Yeah, because like I, I, I catch myself, you know, <laughs> but right. it's literature studies because it's it's not no you use the you use the the Bible as like basically a reference, <laughs> you know, and you study right. the literature. It's an but, it's totally yeah. Afterthought. So uh, and they're distorted Bible scriptures anyway. So, <laughs> but but I was like, you know what? I said to myself one day, because I was just so angry with the things that I saw that was going on and how they were. I mean, I caught them in outright lies, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I love my parents, and I, they're really good people, but they do a lot of things in the name of the Watchtower that are very hurtful and have been. But they're, but they're good people on that. But anyway, so I'm, I'm like, okay. 
Facebook has got all kinds of different ex or, or all different kinds of groups, right? Support groups. I'm saying to myself, and I'm like, I bet you they got XJWs. So I, I like did a search on it. I was like, oh my god. And then um, that turned me on to to your videos, to Mike and Kim's videos. And I, oh my god, I was like, you know, I watch a lot. And I had now I have my own channel too, which is called Born and Pixie, which I haven't done anything with it in a while, but I did tell my story in it. Yeah. Make sure you the link below. But yes, born and picture. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of like some of my video. Like I'm kind of like embarrassed about it in a sense. But it was my state yeah. of mind. It's just my state of mind when I did it because I get very emotional and um, they really the doing the videos really helped me to have more peace of mind and be in a better state now. I did it a couple years ago, so. To have to be able to like publicly tell my story, and it's basically even though I can't like confront people face to face like that, you know, now I wouldn't want to anyway. I want to be in that space, <laughs> but you know, even you're breathe the same alone, air as so many people. Huh? You're not alone. You're not alone. Yeah. A lot of people use YouTube. I don't know, maybe somebody. But it's it real. Yeah, it's real by talent. Yeah, heal. I mean, you, know I mean? you guys. I mean, you were talking. Well, I want to talk about the death thing too, but the funerals, but um about going on medication and stuff. I started, I, oh my God, I, I became like severely depressed when I was like 16. And it had to do with coming to the realization, well, something, an incident happened with my family at school. And with school, my parents found out about it. And I, I cut school, whatever. <laughs> once in my life, I was a good girl. I cut school once I was a boy. <laughs> so I got in trouble. And then, the, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so... You know, I love boys. <laughs> so, anyways, <laughs> um, but of course, you're not allowed to have boyfriends, and you can't have friends in school, even girlfriends. You couldn't, they, no one could call you. You could talk on the phone. I mean, just like completely sheltered. And they basically, the following day, they when they find out, they can't wait into school behind my back. And I, I was like, yeah, I was like 16, and they um change all my classes so I couldn't be in this is my parents said I'm like I need to control not all like my freedom was school that was my freedom that was where I could be who I wanted to be um but like when you're at home you got to put on a different face or at the kingdom hall you got to put on a different face and it was that was my freedom and that was my outlet people like at the end of the school year it's like in June everybody would like um you know, hugging. I mean, I was crying because I knew I wasn't going to see anybody until September, you know, or have any contact with them. So, but anyway, so I got into this deep depression because I came to this realization, like, you know, you're, you're a teenager now. You, you want your freedom, your independence. You know, when you're a little kid, you don't really n notice it that much because mommy and daddy are everything. But now you want to reach out, branch out, have make friends. And you're, you can't even develop friends. You, you can't. You, you have no freedom. You have no outlet. You have nothing. Um, I, well, you know, some Jehovah's Witness kids do, but I didn't. <laughs> and it's your home. That's your, I, I call it my JW prison that I lived in. And it's like, I mean, I couldn't even ride my bicycle off the road that we lived on. My mom, I did it once or twice. My mom came looking for me. <laughs> yeah. So, well, but it's like I, the, I, you know what, um, Jennifer, my mom had, we could ride our bikes from one tree. There was like four houses down and right back to the where we were. So and I you weren't doing anything out. wrong. I lived right. out in farm country. It was at dairy farms in New York. Oh, I, wow. I didn't live that. Yeah, I didn't, I, like, I didn't, I grew up in Orange County, which is the same county that War, you know, Warwick's in. I, not too far. And my, my parents, like their, their congregation actually has territory, <laughs> preaching territory in Warwick. So like I know exactly where everything is, and I you know watched our farms was like really close by and been there many times and but um but anyway, I went on medication because I went into this deep depression and I just refused to talk to anybody and I was just sitting in my room and my mom said like, well you got to go to a doctor and they, you know put me on med 16 years old and but um I also am a survivor of child sexual abuse so. Oh, there's just so many. I was on on and off medications throughout my entire life and therapy, the attempted suicides. I've been hospitalized like four or five times. You know, it's, you know, I got a big, long history of nothing but, you know, heartache and all that stuff. But, but anyway, as far as, um, 
the uh, what do you call it? the 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 suicide thing? Or not just I'm not suicide, but the funerals. I wanted to share experience recently. My uncle had passed away. Non you know non JW. Uh, my parents were had came into it when um I was when they, my mom was pregnant with me, and I'm one of six kids, and I'm the fourth one. So my three older ones got were able to celebrate birthdays and all that stuff, you know, before. But anyway, um, so anyway, my uncle passes away. And now I moved to North Carolina, and my parents are still in New York. So I'm on the phone with, with my mom. And it, I don't, I'm thinking maybe it's close to a year ago. So it'll be almost a year ago, I'm thinking now, since he passed. So I'm talking to her on the phone. And she's telling me, and it's so sad because my mom's like the strongest person I've ever known. Like she's like one of these women that like she doesn't cry, you know, and she's like just so strong and just braves through everything. And um, her voice is getting choked up and she's, she's like, Jennifer, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Because now she's, she's like the only girl and her younger brother passed away years ago and now her older brother passed away. She's like, I don't know this feeling I have inside of me, she's saying, right? That she's like this emptiness. And she's like, I don't know what it is. She's like, I just feel so empty. She's like, I don't know how I'm going to be able to sleep. And I'm like, she says, but I shouldn't be feeling this way. And I'm just going to have to like just block it out and ignore it. And I'm like, mom, no, you have every right to grieve for your, your brother. You know, I mean, come on. But that's like the what the watchtower does is that you're not supposed to grieve. And my mom is here. Oh, yes. I was in tears. I was like, my, I was choked up. Like, I want, I wish I could go through that phone and just like hug her. Because it's like, mom, <laughs> you need to allow yourself to grieve. And that was something that, like, she's so, she's so strong-willed. And, I, like, I'm getting choked up <laughs> too well, thinking you know, about that, it. But. Take, take a moment if you can. I just want to say for those who are, again, our audience that's watching, that grieving within the Jehovah's Witnesses is like, like a huge no-no at a funeral. Yeah. Um, I've witnessed it myself. When someone has gotten over emotional, they will take you out. And it appears to be that you have a lack of faith, is what right. I was told. If you're crying too much or over theatrical or not theatrical, but I guess just grieving because you're sad because you lost somebody. Um, so I mean, Jennifer, before we let you go, we do have Molly backstage. Do you have any other final thoughts that you want to share with us or about the show or with Kim and Mikey? No, well, I'm gonna be watching the show from I mean, you guys are like okay, first, okay, through Rick Fearon, Matt Christopher, I got Chessa, <laughs> you know. And now, now you like now this like um, whole thing with with this glass table was like this is like so cool. <laughs> okay, so I love it. I love Kathy it. Allen is asking for your YouTube name because they want to see your videos. Yeah, they, it, a lot of people in the comments love to hear your story. It's, uh, yeah, it's born in Pixie. The picture of me is when I was four years old, and that's when I was first molested. Oh mm. wow! I'm so sorry and, to hear that. So and it was it was it was a it was a um. He's not a Joe's witness, but his mother was, and so, uh, and she still is. I didn't know Joe's witness, but like, we were very close with the family and stuff. I mean, he, he had a non-believing father, and so the kids kind of, you know, they came to the meetings, but then they didn't, you know, that kind of thing. But um, yeah, and so, I, that's why I have the picture of when I was a little girl, because you know, four years old. That's when you know, you see that big happy smile and stuff, and it's like. It's just kind of changed it all, you know. We we thank you so much, Jennifer, for you yeah. trusting our platform enough to be able thank to share you. your story, yeah. to be able to be as. Oh, you don't know all my story. Oh my god! But you oh, know, you know what? we are actually dedicating a show um, to <laughs> oh, uh, child sex abuse of uh, sex of uh, sorry CSA child sex abuse survivors. It's actually yeah. coming up soon, um, so you are welcome to come back to it's share. Like, it's like bad. Um, but yeah. but anyway, um, just, I want to say something quick. Okay, sure. I, Go right I, 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 we're talking about the um. Oh, oh. Also, too, Kim, you had said something about your brother and how like he committed suicide and stuff, and like how your mother said, 
oh, he was mentally ill or whatever, you know, and, and he was going to do it. Well, you know what? This is That's something that really pisses me off that people say because um, all my life, I, I, because I, since I was four, four years old is when it all started, and then growing up in the Watchtower, that added a little more to it. But my entire family is, oh, she's crazy. She's nuts. Well, yeah, I wound up in the, I'm the one that wound up in the mental hospital, you know, more than a few times. Um out of my siblings and stuff and and um she's not she's crazy dismiss her instead of asking me why instead of trying to find out why i feel that way um why i want to hurt myself why am i depressed ask the reason why i mean i i know there's a a lot of times that it's very frustrating to under to try to understand even yourself of why um right. like with the the complex uh post-traumatic stress a lot of times you don't register why you feel the way because your conscious mind does not remember it doesn't i mean doesn't um connect the dots with the, what you're feeling now when you're being triggered so you're it's it's a it's the emotion that you're you know you might be triggered but you don't you don't connect the dots to the trauma that you had before if that makes sense but exactly yeah and so, i just want to say that i'm looking at the comments here um uh, we do have, well, you know, there's an article that I can share with you guys uh, that I personally wrote about, you know, if you are leaving the Jehovah's Witnesses and having pseudoscience thoughts, numbers you can call, things you can do to reach out for help. Um, I just want to say here that I know that you guys are sharing a lot of your stories here, but if you are having suicidal thoughts there, we're going to, uh, I'm going to dig up the number. Maybe one of us can dig up the hotline real quick so I can put it, flash it across the screen. Um, because, you know, nothing is worth you hurting yourself over. And there are so many of us, and PJ can attest to this, even in her activism and all of our activism, we have all been touched by suicide of an ex Jehovah Witness in some way. So, you know, I just want to encourage you guys in the comments to talk about it in a very healthy way. But if you um, are needing some help or need to reach out uh, for assistance, uh, we're going to um, get that hotline and we're going to flash it across the screen here. Jennifer, we thank yeah. you so much for having Molly back to stage. Yeah, I'll be talking um, to you again. <laughs> uh, this is great. Make sure you check but out I, our, our future shows because, you know, we, we actually do come on anytime, girl. Come and share like your stories and share. Uh, so we thank you so much, Molly. Are you still back there? Mike and Kim, I love you guys. I love yes. you guys. Bye. Much, much love to both of you. Love you too, Jennifer. Thank you. And you look great. You've come such a long way since back when you first contacted us. I, if you remember me, I, oh, I mean, I, I, such a better place now. Thank you so that, much. That, that Thank peace, you. the peace inside of you, that peace, peace, contentment, happy with who you are. Yes. Don't need to prove it to anybody. I don't right. care what you think. Um, I don't care what religion you are. I'm going to love you whoever you are, and I'll show you that love, but you also got to show me respect. Otherwise, bye. Thank you so much. So proud of you, Jennifer. <laughs> My goodness. Those Hi, Molly. Are... Hi, Molly. Thank you. You've been, you've been back. As the bunnies, are, are they doing okay? Are they, are they driving <laughs> you crazy? Uh, thank you so, so much for putting the hotline up there. That is yeah, the hotline, you, hotline, uh, hotline. And so we're, we're going to move on. We are two and a half, uh, almost approaching three minutes, uh, three hours, three minutes. We have not been on here okay. three minutes, y'all. <laughs> three hours on our show. Nice. So we're going to actually go to our next segment to try to keep the conversation going. We do have somebody. I see somebody trying to come in on the stream. Keep going. Keep going. You're almost there. I think um, that's <laughs> girl in the comments hi sweetie i know you know she has a problem with depression too there's so many that have so many problems and you know we we see the happy faces and them doing videos but we don't see behind the camera and the problems they deal with and you know i'm not picking on smurf girl but so many so yes. many so many. and you know 
our hearts go out to all of you and all of the abuse survivors and all of the suicide survivors. And I'm sorry, I'm keeping you from doing your clips. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, you are fine. We are. Thank you for having you. So now it's saying that we're at max capacity for guests. So we thank you so much for joining us and clicking the link to join us. So we're going to try to get to everybody as soon as we can. I think we there is a limitation at some point that they will cut us off on the screen stream. So we're going to go try to move through these uh, clips so that we can keep going here. Um, PJ, I don't know uh -huh. if you can see y'all can see me behind this little live little flag up here. <laughs> But uh, PJ and I uh, were featured in a Kegel Harbor. Uh, uh, first of all, Mike and Kim did a, a video on the Kegel Harbor murder suicide. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm here. I'm native here to Michigan, so this was uh, all plaster all over our screens. It was uh, talked about. I even have a recording of talking to a Jehovah Witness about this uh, because it was who came to my door. Because you, if you come to my door, I don't know if y'all can see me. But if you come to my door, you might get preached to back. So in any case, uh, PJ, can you tell us a little bit? You started to touch on uh, about your sister. Uh, so can you tell us a little bit more about your story that was featured in this uh, uh, article? And then we can uh, move on. Um, to yeah. Right. Um, oh, where'd it go? <laughs> oh, here we go. Sorry. <laughs> there you go. I lost it well, actually, you know, let me actually bring up the actual article here. I actually uh, dug it up here. Mm -hmm. This is the actual yes. front. You was front page news, not only on free on the free press, but also the USA Today. Mm -hmm. it, it went. The story went international. I was sent a copy of the story in uh, Italian as well. It was in an Italian newspaper. But um. Yeah. Basically, what had happened is I was online reading about uh, Lauren Stewart and uh, the Kego Harbor murder-suicide where she had killed her husband, her adult son, her adult daughter, and then herself. And it was all because they had been disfellowshipped for sending their children to college to get an education. Uh, and when I read that story, it just moved me to the point that I couldn't stay quiet anymore. And I just had to talk about what happened to my sister uh, when she got disfellowshipped for making a mistake and everybody cut her off. And then she ended up shooting herself. Mm. And um, I, I remember talking to Therese about this on the um, phone about everything. And she was she was flabbergasted to find out how many times uh, disfellowshipping and shunning ended in uh, suicide. Thank you, um, PJ. Um, and uh, I, 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 at this juncture, I like to say, I'm sorry, give me a second here. I'm trying to uh, flip these screens y'all back here back in the back screens i do i just want to say that i do see you guys behind the stage please hold on don't don't go uh we'll get to you um i like to say that um uh, i dropped a link in the comments of my husband and i actually reflecting almost hyperventilating very nervous about the fact that we were featured in this article and here's the reason why my husband and I use aliases because uh, my husband is still in the organization. Uh, technically, technically, although he is out, so he's a technically a fader. Um, however, we both have family because we were uh, in very much in uh, the organization who are um, don't know that we've apostatized, but pretty much know that we're no longer. Uh, in the organization so i like to say that if if we um, we're not going to show the clips because we're short on time today but go ahead and listen to our thoughts and reflections on the article there uh there was a situation and i just want to say that if you guys are into activism that you have the right to be able to kind of control your own narrative which is important because if you have family that are still in and you want to use aliases or you want to be behind the scenes where people don't really know who you are, you have to be very um, 
not aggressive, but very assertive with some of the press um, to be able to let you be able to tell your story at your own place and be able to tell, you know, whether or not you want to reveal yourself or not. And that was, um, anonymity was very important for us because of our precarious situation of us both having family that are in the truth, so to speak, or in the organization. And because of, unfortunately, um, uh, the platform that we were given within the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, we still live in the neighborhood, y'all. People know us, <laughs> like they see us. We see them at the store like once or twice a day. So I'm like, seriously, that's how small of a world, even though Detroit is very big, the, ex the Jehovah Witness world is very small. So I won't go into a, a lot because you guys can look at that here. And I also want to acknowledge uh, let me get off, get out this uh, close up here. I got the lab banner on me again. I don't know what's going on here, y'all. I want to acknowledge uh, Apostle Babe's comment who said that she also did a video. I'm sorry, Apostle Babe, it's kind of buried here. Oh, there we go. That you made a recording about the Kiko Harbor murder suicide, but you haven't posted it because you really had gotten real when you recorded it. I'm going to though. Make sure you guys look out for Apostle Bay Lynn James's video. I, you know, here's the thing. Doing YouTube videos, these, this type, it, it is a activism, but it's also a service. I'm sorry if you can see me. Service and a labor of love. So I just want to say that we should support each other because we all have the common goal of trying to not only help Jehovah Witnesses, I'm going to be seeing Jehovah Witnesses out of the cult, but also to heal because we're all in this journey together you know what i'm saying we're all on the same road we're all on the same journey and i know we're saying kumbaya and we love each other tonight and tomorrow we're going to be arguing but at the same time i just hope that we can actually remember that you we're family what? and that we love each other that family fall out and you love each other and then you fall out again and then some of y'all too toxic that we probably never talk to again and y'all probably won't talk to us because you probably think we toxic but at the same time I just like to say that we all have the same common goal and some of us have the same struggles, the same hurts and pains, cry the same tears. And Kim and Mikey could probably attest that even in my little baby activism, I've been up many a nights talking to extra Jehovah Witnesses and Jehovah Witnesses alike who are on the edge, y'all, who yep. don't want to be here no more, who can't do it no more. So while we arguing and we're fighting, you know, can we all get along? You know? Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that we are not in a cult anymore so we're not all gonna get along and we don't need to honestly uh you can't be friends with everyone at one point you have to stand up and say no and just cut contact with certain people because they are not helping you better yourself or not helping you be, be healthy and right. some boundaries are important that's what molly is trying to say boundaries are important now i'm not saying that right yeah. At the same Boundary time, people. we can show a little more mercy, and give us each other just a little bit more grace. I know I'm yeah. not a, I know I'm not a Christian no more, and I know I'm not yeah. preaching to y'all, but I'm just saying we can give each other a little bit more kindness and give each other a little bit more benefit of the doubt. Not everybody is a crook. Not everybody is out here out to get us, you know. And it's the same energy that you gave the Watchtower, which was zero, because a lot of y'all who are complaining when y'all were sitting in the Keenum Hall, y'all wasn't asking the Watchtower about the finances. Y'all wasn't holding the Watchtower account when y'all in the hall. But at the same time, y'all want to, you know, hold activists to a unbelievable standard mm -hmm. you know, beyond the Watchtower and attack activists who are trying to help you. The Watchtower didn't care about you. The Watchtower, the activists do. You know, a lot of us do. Now, a lot of us not, you know, we are all people. Not all of us are in it for the right reason, but you'll be able to point out those ones. We're not going to shout them out on this channel, but let, but you do have to be careful because not everybody is out for your best interest. So, Molly, yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off, but I, I mean, yeah, so just I don't know, as I said, the spirit that, hit me. I don't know. That if, okay. someone, if someone is pushing you in the wrong direction, if someone right. is being a fucking bigger, you have the right to say, fuck you, I'm out, bye. bye. Like, no, you don't need to, you don't need to. I, I actually recently made a cleaning up on my Facebook and I was just like, no, if you have anything pro-life, if you have anything 
racist, if you have anything uh, anti-queer on your page, you're out. Bye. I don't care. I, I, I'm as much as you have the right to say it, I have the right to, to say I don't want to be exposed to that. That's why we mm -hmm. left Facebook back in 2017, yeah. 2018, whatever it was. It, it just got horrible. I could not deal with Facebook and all of the hate and attacks and just, oh my goodness, it was just so much. You know, someone who would need help would actually kind of get neglected because here's someone like, oh, well, I contacted you a month ago. Why didn't you do this and why didn't you do that? And it's like, because it wasn't a priority because mm -hmm. we're trying to fight a cult here. Right. And, yeah. and you know what? We lose so many of our good activists because y'all just wear people out. Yeah. yeah. I just, do, I mean, I'm not just y'all. I'm not. I, I know I'm new, so I'm not just saying. You know, you did, 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 did. But I'm just saying, some of y'all just wear people out with all of the, with all of the drama y'all got going on. So we're just Crazy. gonna keep moving. Like, we're gonna keep it positive. So the I next. Uh, go ahead, Molly. I I'm started sorry. activism last September and I needed a break by fucking November. <laughs> Girl, yes. Yeah. Uh, I'll take frequent self care breaks now. That's what I call them now. I was like, yes. you know what? Y'all not going to wear me. Now. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. We're joking, y'all. We're, we're, we're uh, it's all in good fun. Yeah, uh, so good so good just, go ahead. Yeah. Been a few times when Kim and I have just said, you know, to hell with this. Well, why are we giving so much of our life right. when there is still just, you know, so much hate? But we also have to remember, too, that when it comes to Facebook, who do you really know is on your Facebook? Have you met these people? Right. They're, they're just a name. They very much could be xjw's or they could be just a troll pretending to be an xjw trying to get that um that recognition or reaching out for anything that they can get a hold of i'm i've lost my my word that i was looking for um the train left the station yeah the train's gone <laughs> but, you know, that's, but that but that's part of the problems that we face is that when you see that there's a genuine need, how many trolls are on that Facebook just to disrupt what we're trying yeah. to accomplish? And that gets very hard at times because those that are in genuine need are now going to have to pay the price for the disruptors. So it, 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 it's, a, it's really a double-edged sword. And, you know, it got so difficult to where, like, when we go be to bed at night, we have to unplug our phone yeah, now. Like literally. I mentioned before, you know, a prominent XJW activist revealed our home phone and, you know, home physical yeah. address and stuff. We would get this guy, he would drink and he would get drunk and he would call us at like two or three o'clock in the morning. And he would be crying about losing his JW family and all of this. And we're like, what can we do? We can't do anything to help you. And it's two o'clock in the morning. Mike has to get up and go to work. I've got a busy schedule tomorrow. And he would get mad at us. And he actually got to where he would send me just tons and tons of emails and phone calls, just cussing us out. You would not believe the language. And he goes, you're my effing brothers and sisters. Stop acting like effing JW witnesses. You know, yeah, just, <laughs> and, and so this is why we have to unplug our phone at night when, you know, yeah. he has to go to bed early because, you know, he gets up early to go to work. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we have to unplug our phone at night, but this is the kind of stuff you have to deal with behind well, the scenes. It's why you have to set boundaries and stick yeah. with them. Turn otherwise, off your phones. Otherwise, and also, run your ad. Don't just take breaks when you are worn out. No, 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 no. Also, take daily breaks. Like, like these days, I got into the habit of just putting my phone like far away from me, just sitting down at my laptop with a notebook and focusing on my writing. And I'm like, well, you can tag me, call me, message me. If it's like... Um, something urgent obviously i still look at my phone periodically because i know 
that I move in a circle where it's necessary that we stay in touch because we're activists and we're dealing with fragile people. So obviously you're not gonna wanna leave them hanging. So I check my phone every like 30 to 60 minutes, but I, I'm gonna be like, if it's not urgent, I, I'm seeing your message, but I'm, I might not reply immediately because I'm doing something that I do for pure enjoyment or entertainment. And exactly. another, thing, another thing I heard, I saw an activist, I, I said this actually the other day. I don't know if y'all can see me. I don't mean to cut you off, Kim. Um, but I saw an activist the other day actually complain. And it's probably an activist that was mentioned here. Just a little tea here. But anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, complain have, about the fact that they get so many uh, inboxes. Yeah, I have been in touch with uh, activists far, far bigger than I think my activism will ever be and they were like <laughs> oh my god i want to wake up once without all these fucking messages oh my god i want to wake up once without all this fucking uh like drama and i'm like well you fucking chose it didn't you okay in that spirit somebody actually says here uh molly this message is for you uh, they says that they love when Molly drops the f bomb. That's our favorite word. <laughs> <laughs> we can attest to that. Can we tell? <laughs> that is Molly's word, y'all. So I'm before sorry, we, so I, I was about, my, I the reason why you know, this channel ain't never gonna be monetized. <laughs> 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 you sure? You sure? Yeah. One thing I do want to say, if you're an activist and you want to run a group, because I've run my group for 12 years now, right, get yourself a good mod team. Yes. Because I have days where I have to step away from the group and just not have that group in my day. Yes. And I still get drama kicking off and people have to deal with, but it is yeah. very draining yes it uh, i wouldn't put it up for the world because i do it for a reason and people have actually like i've said before on this show that people have told me that my group has saved their life so for that reason i would never ever give up the group but it does take a hell of a lot out of you it does. you need and to I, just, I just want to say that we I, I, that emma you a man uh ex jehovah witness group over four thousand members or more right mm -hmm. Five, and then, I am in a group about 4,000 men or more, but they're Jehovah Witnesses. So let me just say yeah. something. Self-care is important because they report posts that are just because they just don't like what's going on or... Even like JW do. We're allowed to talk about <laughs> sex now. And now we report <laughs> about sex. And I'm like, really? Yeah, no. like, Honestly, <laughs> it's crazy. I was, a, uh, I, I was in some JW group and I even was a moderator in one. And honestly, I I appreciated the people, and I actually loved that um, that that came out wrong. But I loved people reaching out to me because I was like, "Fuck yeah, that is why I'm doing this. That is why I accepted being a moderator in the first place." Like, yeah, I want to know. I want people to know that I got them. Like because because I do, and uh, if. If you're a person who knows me from from those days, fuck yeah, hit me up, reach out. I'm here. I'm still here. I still have love for you, but I'm I'm following my conscience and not someone else's conscience like I I was expected to. I'm okay, so you heard it. You heard it straight from Bali. Fuck yeah, reach out to her. <laughs> All right. So here we go. I just want to. I want to. I don't know where we're going to cut off in the stream, and I. I do want to get to uh, our last three slides. And Chester, can you tell us a little bit about uh, the beautiful slides? Stop saying that you you didn't know what you were doing because this is awesome. Tell us yeah. about what we're seeing here. Okay, so this is my free speech slide, and that's kind of when I started like really engaging myself in the XJW community because. Up until then, I'd be follow, I'd been following activists doing their thing, like the VAA would have protests, there was a UK protest. That was super inspiring for me, and a lot of that was what helped me feel um, the courage to speak out. And so um, I was the first blog um, up, up there in the corner to have a, 
uh, on VAA's website. Um, uh, also, I got to meet Sharon Tyson. She actually drove. She did her own uh, one-man protest. I think she talked about that a couple weeks ago. And um, she ended up meeting up with me, so we got to do that. Um, the one of me in the shirt is where I have the I Voted sticker. I got to vote for the first time. That was a wild experience. Um, and then uh, there's a couple of me and my dad, how he was supporting me. Um, the one at the bottom is the first video I ever did um, where I actually like introduce, introduced myself and kind of explained some of the stuff that I wanted to do. And then the one at the far bottom is um, one of my best friends, Annie Dodd. She actually went with me to the Roxy rally. She was with me like holding my hand for me telling the Philadelphia Inquirer about my article. And she even went to uh, Brooklyn with me when I filmed for the witnesses. Like she's a trooper. She's never been a witness. She's just in it to win it. And that was her friend, Marianne, who let us stay with her when we were in PA. So um, yeah, that's the first slide. And then this is Barbara Anderson. Um, and again, she just helped me kind of find um, my voice and, and kind of gave me like all the details on Watchtower policy and stuff like that. She had watchtowerdocuments.org. And so she really like went into explaining um, how we can uh, deal with with policy in a way that will make it uh, change in the future to be better for children. So she was really a huge help to me, and she was also a really good friend of my dad's. She was with him. She, I think he called him her like a couple days before he died, even. So she was a huge support to him, and I'm really appreciative to her for that. And then um, this is the article that the Inquirer published on our protest. So this was the first protest that I did, and it was for Reading, Pennsylvania. There was a um, assembly there. And um, that was the first protest I ever did in 2018. These are some of the signs that we had. Everybody kind of, you know, I love seeing people's signs because um, everybody comes up with their own deal. But uh, the signs behind me kind of up here are also from that PA protest. Those are all the signs that were printed out. And then um, this is when we were there. So WGAL came and they interviewed us and uh, talked about our protest as the local news station in Reading. Um, we had John Redwood with us. We had a lot of people um, there. There was even some PMOs who came and didn't want their faces shown, but they came with signs to protest with us, which was wild. Um, and we actually had a director there. I can't go too much into it, but we also had a director from another um, type of venue. So. Uh, we got really empowered, you know, some of those shots that are shown in the news clip from there are um, also part of his direction and kind of goading us forward. So it ended up being an awesome protest for sure. And then, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so um, the reporter who came to interview me, she had already contacted the uh, convention beforehand and said that she was a member of the press and that she wanted to meet with someone who was a press representative there. So they said, yeah, they gave her the access. So she came and interviewed me on the sidewalk first during her protest, and then she tried to go in, and they actually got on camera. It's on the um, news clip from the news. Uh, that, that gentleman down there who's kind of smug, he said, your supposed privileges have been revoked. And the way he said it was like he was waiting to say that line his whole life, and he was like suddenly the cool kid. Right. Um, but they, they were trying to fight us all day long. We uh, we went during the middle of the day because everybody was inside. They gave an announcement and said that apostates have surrounded the building. So you guys are in danger. Stay in. So and all we had was signs. We weren't doing anything wrong. We, we literally shouted. We love you. Just call the police. That's the, that's the whole message that was there. Um, so we tried to take a break. And I think there was like a Dairy Queen or something. And we tried to sit down there. And we had a film crew with us. We were all trying to hang out and breathe. And they actually called the Dairy Queen. And we're like, oh, they shouldn't be there. That's too many people on a property, blah, 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 blah. Like to get us to stop doing that even. It was crazy. Yeah, but it was a great protest. It was very successful. Cool. Now I'm looking forward to what's going to happen when I, I, I get my hands in uh, on battle. Like, I... I <laughs> I am like a loaf of bread. Anyone could grab me and take me. I'm like, I literally weigh nothing. I mean, maybe after quarantine, it might be a challenge because I keep eating all day. Like... Anyway. So, guys, we see you guys in the comments. We want to thank all of our guests for coming on to the show. Stacey Gavin, Kimmy Mikey, 
Um, yeah. It looks like we do have a one other qu a question here. Mike and Kim, I just don't understand, or it's more of a statement. Mike and Kim, I just don't understand people, why they do that to you. I've never reached out in the coffin. I, I, I always wanted to do that, but I never got a chance to do it. Well, you all need to be on the nail in coffin. Yeah. I'm in nail in the coffin. I'll, I'll do it. I'm on it. I want to do it. I want to do it. Even uh, Mike was like, wow, because I think it was like 10 or 11 of my family you read out. Like, it was just like, wow. <laughs> well, I think it was your Facebook group. There was some on your Facebook yeah. group. Yeah, I did that as well. Yeah. So all of you were on there. Yeah. So, Spencer, I've got you, Jennifer. Well, what's with the faith with the coffee? Molly? Is? Molly? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Can Thank you tell you? For those who are I'm not familiar about, uh, for those not familiar with the Nell and Coffee, can you just briefly tell us, tell okay. our audience what it is? No, go ahead. I'm writing names. Well, we okay. actually, <laughs> actually noticed looking at Watchtower's year-end report that they quit um, tracking how many people were disfellowshipped. So we knew that Watchtower at that point was having a hemorrhage problem that they no longer would track how many people are leaving. So we decided to mock Watchtower that, you know, with the coffin lid, we were going to kind of keep track of it ourselves, right? And then it just blossomed. So what what we did? Sorry to interrupt you, dear, but I just want to mention. Are you that correcting me? I, I, you know, are you no, correcting no, me live on YouTube right here? No, sweet. I'm just <laughs> having this. We also noticed by doing reverse math from their yeah. year in you know numbers that there was approximately 150 to 200 thousand missing every year mm. in their numbers. So continue. Yeah. yeah. So anyhow, to mock Watchtower, we thought that we would keep track of it. And then it blossomed to what it is in today. Now, originally what we did is we put a qualifier on it that you had to have been disfellowshipped or um, uh, had your letter of disassociation read after 2014, because that's the first year we started that. And then as it grew, it's like, well, wait a minute, we're going to have to make adjustments here because now we have PMOs that want to be on it because they're mm. you know, physically in, but they're mentally you know, mm -hmm. they're done with the bullshit. So we we made the uh yeah <laughs> I love that. He said it physically in. Okay, we talked about acronyms. Do we have an acronym for physically in but done with the bullshit? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? We I D we don't even know what that acronym, acronym is. That's gonna be okay, a I love that P W B S. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have PMO elders, pioneers. Bethelites and one mm -hmm. sucker over here on our on the coffin, coffin lid. <laughs> a sucker over here. What is it? Watch Town Bible Crap Society, is it? Bible yeah, yes, Society. yeah, just mine. Yeah. Right? Watch Town Bible Crap Society. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoever has left and is not going back, we have a pin for you. We have an old timers for those that left Yay. before 2014. We have a little heart for those who were like. In Bible it. studies and quit. Bible <laughs> studies or kids that were raised in it but never baptized. I mean, we're going to make accommodations. <laughs> yeah, but now I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a special case because my blood family was not JWs, but I was indoctrinated. <laughs> so I was a born man. Now, it happened yeah. when I was like five. So, yeah. And then yes, I could or, never get baptized because I was not 18 yet. So I guess Jehovah was looking out for me after all. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Well, bless you, Molly. Bless you. Jehovah is looking out for you. Lean on Jehovah, Molly. Then what we did is we started. <laughs> then what we did is we started tracking property Watchtower was selling. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of started as like a mocking thing. And it started growing and growing. And a friend of ours made a coffin lid that's about this big. And now we just did a video last weekend releasing the Watchtower Property Tracker because a team of activists, love you guys, best you know team ever. Um, many, many in Australia, you know, Adam and Laura and Bill. I mean, my goodness, they put together this Watchtower Property Tracker. And so now 
we've got the links down below that video you can go in and put property it got to be so much for me to yeah. find all these properties i mean there's more than i can care yeah. and take care of and so we just can't do the nail and coffin for the kingdom hall and watch our property ourselves anymore because it's grown so big uh the last mm -hmm. time i checked yeah. Adam and updated it 2.61 billion dollars watchtower mm -hmm. property has been sold wow That's and they always wow. cry and broke oh. and want you to yeah. wear them suits from the uh from the what you call it from the second hand store while, while they walk in with italian made suits and watches mm -hmm. uh, rolexes and jehovah witnesses that are they you know emma they always say in the groups that they aren't rolexes they are oh, rolexes. Yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but, but when i heard about the brooklyn buildings being for sale I researched that and I put together a list and it went over like two billion. I was like, what the hell? And then I found out about the IBSA, which is all the apartments and the buildings in the UK. Yeah. And surprised to them. How is it worth a million and a half? And there's right. loads of them on the website. Yeah, it's just like, what? It's a real, it's a real estate scam. Yes. I mean, a real estate scam. It's just, it seems that way anyway. I mean, I hate to put it that way, but it seems they just flip a card. That's all they do. And they need money. They need the money to silence all the CSA. And we think where there's probably double that amount that they have sold since like 2004 or 2006, because that's yeah. really when we start our tracker. Um, but it started escalating in 2012 when the Australian Royal Commission was announced now it's our theory our group's theory that you know that's when they really started selling property but there is so many that we don't know the price of so that right. 2.61 billion dollars is a very low figure and that's only the ones we know about yeah mm -hmm. right. i also sent so you a link but i don't know whether you looked into it guys i found out that they also sell machinery lorries yeah. antiques like so when i discovered that Cars, website, vans, they, probably, they probably get stuff like donated for quick builds they use that and then mm -hmm. sell it up yeah. yeah i forgot about the stocks and share that they own they say they uh, don't profit from it they also say that uh you know that they inherit this from people who passed on or who have died and so you know they didn't actually buy the stocks they just actually i don't know watching them and benefit from them it's kind of crazy um, no, so before no, we move no, on i just want to let you know that we're approaching a little a uh, uh, time in a uh, live stream that i don't know anything can happen i don't know if we can gonna get cut off at this point but yeah, i do want to let you know to let you know hey we can stay all night and well, I you know, I actually go to work tomorrow. <laughs> right. So I just want to let um before just go around the uh, glass table for well, let's start with our guest Kim and Mikey. Any final thoughts, last thoughts before we go? Uh, thank you so great. much. I mean, so much. I it's just all jumbled up. But thank you so much. Thank you to all of you activists. You know who have put your time and your energy. Love you all. Mm -hmm. And take time for yourself. You know, if you're in this for the long haul, take time for yourself. And don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining about everyone contacting us because I love everybody contacting us and anyone who needs help. And, you know, we try our best. We try our best to answer as many as we can and help as many as we can. But that's why we keep doing this. We've actually quit and retired several times <laughs> through the years and said that's it I'm tired of this bullshit I'm done no, no, yeah. no, I'm like, you, when you guys left you, that brief moment that y'all did left I actually did a video I was very sad I was like how mm -hmm. dare they leave don't leave but I also understood it, yeah. it, just, it was also a sober moment like even Kim and Mikey y'all yeah. get sick of people y'all yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you get an email or phone call i mean we got a phone call from an older woman sorry i get emotional over this she says you saved my life she says you literally saved my life and then something comes up that we can use against watchtower and we're back in the fight again it's like oh hell no we're away with this. It's to leave. <laughs> yeah we're back in the fight it's like we just can't leave 
because it's ones like that. It, it's phone calls and emails like that. And I know you know, Mike can would agree. Well, with we've you. even fielded a call one time from somebody in California and we're thank now there again, you don't know if this is just somebody just talking, reaching out to get a little bit of attention or whatever. But I took a call one day and I spent like about maybe an hour or so with a woman on the phone. And she she confessed, she says, I'm sure glad that you were at home. You took the time to talk to me because she says, I've got a loaded gun right on the table right here. Oh, wow. Right there. And now what if I'd have been out doing anything and not taking that call? Right. Who knows? Who knows? But, you know, the thing, yeah. those situations are real. Those yeah. things happen. And, it, and it's a sad, it, it's a sad thing that this religion that uses a book that is entitled God's Holy Word that destroys so many mm. lives. Destroys yeah. so many lives. So, you know, for me, um, you know, the more that I can mock Watchtower, the better I love it. Uh, but the flip side is, is that Watchtower is using a book that's man-made, a book that contradicts itself. But we've been so indoctrinated not to look at the contradictions. And that's what I've been focusing on a lot lately, as most of you know, is that I am looking at the contradictions. And I'm working a lot with um, XJW Elder's wife, Jane Doe, finding these things and putting together these videos. Because like she says, and she says it better than anybody else, this book is not worth dying for. Mm. It's just not. And when you really get to look at the entire history in that book, it's, it's part civil war. Because that's what these people are doing. They're, they're killing each other over over what? Who who has or who's worshiping the true God? But when you look at the entire history, they they never ever worship one singular God. Mm -hmm. Spoiler alert. Um, he, it's already edited and ready to go. We'll probably upload it tonight. But he did a video over the weekend that everybody will just be like, Oh my God, this is right in the Bible. How come we never saw this before? And it's it's right there in, in plain sight. But see, the thing is, is as Jehovah's Witnesses, we were always taught that we know the Bible better than anybody else. Right. Now, as, a, was told that. as a JW, I did read the Bible many times. And even when I woke up, I went back and I reread it again. And I'm rereading it now with, you know, J Jane Doe. And we're, we're amazed at the stuff that we still mm. missed, even, even as awake as we are now. It's like, well, how did we miss that the last time? Right. It's the, the more, a lot of people will understand this and some may not, but the more your pineal gland opens up, Third the eye. more you will see. Yeah. And that's. Oh. Stand. and comprehend i tried to read the bible for myself and i got as far as a few verses from genesis but then i read like man made god in his image and our image he made them and i thought hold on a minute our that's more than one person yeah and it's there in the new world translation but we never focused on that and then i was just like right. Mm, okay, so that's the first thing. How Watt yeah. explains it is that is Jehovah speaking to Jesus. But this is what we all missed. If you take a mirror and you look in the mirror, whose image are you seeing? You're seeing yourself, right? So if God says, let us make man in our image, well, God is a spirit. God is God. If we are the image of our God, then not are we not by extension God's? Now, I know a lot of people don't warm up to that. But if we are created in the image of a monkey, then we would all look like monkeys. If we are created in the image of a turtle, we'd all look like turtles. If we were all created in the image of a cow, we'd all look like cows. But the Bible says we're created in God's image. So we, by extension, should be God's. But you know what? Okay, so okay. He made man and then he made woman. So I said, our, what woman was God with then? Yeah. 
Next yeah. mic man in our what image. Model? Right. See? Well, not only that, but um, when we first left, we were watching uh, Jeff Benner's uh, videos on YouTube, and he's a Hebrew scholar, and he said the language in that is God the Father talking to Mother Earth because we're dirt in spirit. So mm -hmm. let us make man in our image. Some may believe um, that the Anunnaki, ancient aliens, you know, whatever you want to believe, created us. And those were the gods, the Elohim, who said, let us make man in our image. And there's just so much. And the thing is, is we do not have right. proof. You don't have it. 100% proof either way. We don't have proof that the universe started with you know a spark the big bang we don't have proof that a a god created man and woman we don't have absolute proof that the elohim the gods created us we just don't have that proof right now thank you so much you guys in your comments I, i'm not ignoring them i'm trying to flash them all on the screen as fast as you guys are <laughs> there's a lot of we love you, Mike and Kim. You help me, Mike and Kim. We so, love Mike and Kim, we love you. When you guys get a chance, please go back and read some of these comments. Um, I, I, know, I know you get so many all the time, but yeah, and we I mean, love everybody too. You know, it, it's like since we're older, you know, everybody's like our kids. So, uh, yeah, y'all hear, hear from Kim and Mikey first. So, what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop um, Kim and Mikey's uh, as if y'all don't even know what her ch their channel is. Oh uh, okay, but we'll go ahead and drop it because they they are saying that they are uh, releasing a new video, so you guys don't want to miss it. And we're gonna ask the Kim and Mikey before you go. We're gonna actually go out with the outro because you guys know I always forget the outro, but I'm not gonna forget it tonight. I got it queued up and ready. <laughs> it's it's kind of it's kind of good. I th I think it's good anyway. Anyway, I don't know why I think it's good. But I don't it's know. always anyway. good. All right. <laughs> so anyway, we want to thank you guys so much for joining us for a three yeah, and a half good. hours tonight. You like guys are again. troopers. Y'all hung up with us live for three and a half hours through all the bumbles. It's the almost up. four a.m. Y'all. I don't yeah. think I will. I don't think I will bother to go to sleep at this point. Wait, <laughs> 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 right. we're probably in a. In Hungary, you're in a whole nother day, right? It's yeah, tomorrow. it's Monday here. It's Monday. Right, it's Monday here. Uh, All right, well, it's Monday Monday here. So we want to thank you guys for joining us, and we will see you later. Yes, thank you.